What's the most awkward wedding moment you've witnessed? We showed up to a wedding where the bride was not the girl everyone was expecting. Turns out the couple had called it quits like two weeks before, but the groom was so cheap he did not want to lose all the money invested in the wedding reception, so he decided to ask one of his ex-girlfriends to marry him. The girl accepted. It was very awkward because everyone at the wedding was talking about it. An 8 year old kid got a hold of the mic during the open floor toasts and started singing the Star Spangled Banner. Slowly everyone stood to face a flag. There were no follow up speeches. There's never a wrong time to be a patriot. At my sister in law's, wife's sister, wedding, the best man got up for his toast and told everyone how miserable my sister in law had made the groom during a rough patch, and that he had told the groom to leave her multiple times. But I guess he didn't take my advice, so I'll learn to deal with it I guess. Don't say I didn't warn you, and sat down. Dead silence. Super freaking awkward. I worked in catering service at weddings for quite some time and the most awkward thing I've ever seen was probably when after first dance bride and groom invited their parents to dance too. Bride's father was on wheelchair and the song thief chosen for this dance was I am never gonna dance again and the father was just sitting there watching them dance. It was pretty brutal and I cringed hard. To be fair, the song is actually called Careless Whisper and is really, really not appropriate for a wedding anyway. What started off as toasts from friends quickly became a roast the newlyweds as the alcohol flowed, but in a mean way, not the funny way, really awkward. I'd just like to say John is a piece of crap and Mary is a total B. Hahaha <laughs> JK guys. JK. To John and Mary. My own wedding. Mother of the bride was a thundering B. Everything. Literally everything. Was about her. Example. On the afternoon of 9-11 she called to speak to my fiancé and I said words to the effects of I can't believe what happened today. I'm in shock. So many dead to which she replied yes well I have my own problems. At her grandchild's baptism the year before she asked to make a speech, didn't mention the baby once, but instead insulted the entire congregation for not respecting her enough and ignoring her issues. The baptism before she had droned on for half an hour about her bad back. My bride was determined she wouldn't hijack the speeches with her bulls. We had a cordless mic and the best man was primed to hide it from her the moment the official speeches were over. She was on antidepressants and god knows what else, and during the meal drank a lot of wine. We had chosen the venue because the food was absolutely stellar. 5 star chef. Totally organic vegetables and forest shot game. She announced loudly to the room I wouldn't feed it to a cat. The speeches happened and sure enough she wanted to rock the mic. The best man sleight of handed the mic and passed it to me under the tablecloth and then claimed he's lost it. Mother of the bride got up and started blundering around the room looking for it like King Kong looking for Feyre. One of the bridesmaids subtly tried to block her path and she hissed get out of my way you freaking be a mild scuffle ensued and my bride ran into the toilets crying. The best man instructed the wedding guests that it was time to get up and mingle, whereupon the mother of the bride lay down on the floor in front of the top table howling and kicking her legs like a 3 year old. A kindly uncle sequestered her to another room and my new wife didn't see or speak to her again for 5 years. I went to a Klingon themed wedding. The whole thing was awkward, but the announcer forgetting the bride's name was probably the most awkward occurrence. Klingon names are hard. My first wedding. We thought it would be a good idea to have the ceremony outdoors in a gazebo. It was September, so we didn't think the weather would be an issue. However, it was 90 degrees and humid. My mother, who was standing up next to my father during the ceremony, fainted midway through the ceremony. After a short break to revive her, the ceremony started up again. Then my best man, younger brother, then walked out of the gazebo to throw up. Then came the reception. Since my new bride was Jewish, they had people sitting in a chair and lifted them up. Then came my father's turn. Dad was a big guy, over 250 pounds. One of the guys that helped to lift him had to sit down afterwards because he didn't feel well. He was then rushed to the hospital because he was having a heart attack. Your own red wedding. The worst I saw was when they went to light the unity candle or whatever you call it. The cellophane had been left on. The whole process ended up taking about 15 minutes. The minister got so flustered that afterwards he says something. 
and like this candle, your love will continue brining shitely luckily it was videotaped. Brine shite like a diamond. The groom said, no, never has someplace gotten so awkward to be at so fast. One wedding I went to had a bride who was wheelchair bound. She wasn't completely paralyzed, but her legs were very weak and she never really walked. At the end of the ceremony, they thought it would be cute to have her walk, with assistance, to her decorated scooter 20 feet away. It could have been a sweet inspiring moment, but she was so strained and in so much pain that everyone was uncomfortable. It was dead silent except for the occasional scream she let out. You could have heard a pin drop and it lasted several minutes. Longest 20 feet ever. My stepdad's grandson got his 16 year old girlfriend pregnant, so they had a shotgun wedding. Being 16 and 18, neither had much money, so they had my stepdad rent out a building for both wedding and reception. The building is tiny, two bathrooms, kitchen, and some tables. Fast forward to wedding day, they taped up tablecloths as a room divider to separate ceremony and reception. The groom walks in from outside with his brothers. The bridesmaids come out of the bathroom one at a time, then the bride. Bride is pregnant, and about 6 months along, and her dress is tight. Ceremony starts, unity candles lit, bride vomits everywhere, before the kiss. Her maid of honor pulls up part of her dress and wipes the bride's mouth, because that's what MOH do. S. Time for the big kiss. You may kiss the bridegroom says um, can we do this later? Bride cries. Reception time. Everyone sitting at the table eating catered KFC and drinking water out of plastic wine glasses that disassemble at the stem. A tablecloth barrier has been removed to open up the dance floor. Bride and groom start dancing, and her dress rips down the side. She cries, runs to the bathroom, and puts on her pajamas that she arrived in. Marriage lasted less than one year. TBH I kind of feel really bad for her. The groom who apparently loves singing, bit horrible with it, the guy can't carry a tune to save his life, was asked to sing a song, twice, without backup music, and we sat there looking at each other wondering if all that was a joke. I love technology, but not as much as you you see, but I still love technology, always and forever. At my cousin's wedding, immediately following the new husband saying I do her 5 year old stood up on a chair, threw his fist in the air and yelled kill the beast, dot. That is just awesome. The groom's parents stood up and said that they paid for everything and the bride's parents were mooches, and then the bride's parents threw a bunch of hundred dollar bills at them. Also, at my cousin's wedding the great uncle that had molested her dad tried to make a speech about how cute her dad was as a kid. It didn't go well. Someone took the mic and basically shooed him off stage while everyone was just shocked. I want to be indignant and ask who invited the known molester, but having grown up in a family that covered up and excused abuse without batting an eye I wish I was surprised. On my wedding day, I had family and friends take care of a number of details while I got my hair and nails done. I just left detailed notes as to how to do them. The flowers were delivered to the church and the note said that the mothers and grandmothers got the pink corsages. There were 5 corsages, 4 same size and 1 big one. They assumed the big one was the mother of the bride corsage and the other 4 were 4 mil. 2 grandmas and 1 great grandma. It wasn't. I didn't order one for great grandma. The big one was the cake topper. My mom walked down the aisle with the cake topper pinned to her dress. Out of all these stories this is the one that made me literally laugh out loud. It must have been a very large corsage. Went to a friend's wedding last week. The father of the groom's speech was breathtaking. His opening salvo was to describe the time the bride, who lives with the groom's parents on their farm, helped knacker a horse that had died in a storm. He then spent a bit longer than necessary talking about the fact that the married couple are second cousins. By marriage, but still. But he then essentially made fun of the fact that the bride was 6 months pregnant, saying they both agreed that they wanted to get married and have kids, but they forgot which one happens first which would be fine. But the bride's family were ultra religious, and seemed really unhappy he brought it up. This segued into a rather graphic story about horses giving birth. He went on for what felt like hours, but was probably 5 minutes. It was funny as heck, but I think the bridal party were a tad embarrassed by the end. 
I love inappropriate family members at formal events. At my aunt's wedding during her dance with her uncle who had brain cancer, her dad died long ago. His belt broke and his pants fell down and he chose to go commando that day too. My aunt had to bend down and pick them up for him and held them up as they finished their dance. This one's just terribly sad. My father's second wedding. Context. My father and mother divorced when I was a very young age. He met somebody new. I hate her. He had two boys with her over the course of a 20 plus years. Who I do not hate. They end up tying the knot. I put my differences aside for the day. Everyone's happy. The reception rolls around. And she makes a speech. And one of the lines was I just want to thank everyone for coming. Especially my family. My husband. And my kids. And a huge welcome to my new extended family who have been in for years anyway. Mum and dad. At this time, her family lets out an audible oop, and her sister shouts out an OP, oh yeah and OP, to say the least. Her family know we don't get along, and this was looked down on for the rest of the reception. I found it humorous, everyone else found it awkward. I was drunk, so I didn't care, I just sat there plotting my revenge, possibly murdering her with a grape in some fashion. We were at a wedding where the couple's dog was the ring bearer. Came time for him to give the rings and he couldn't be found. Turns out someone left him in the car and he actually died of overheating during the ceremony. So that was fricked. Jesus freaking Christ. Talk about a bad omen. I was the best man for my buddy. When it came time for speeches. The groom's stepdad got up and started subtlety bashing my buddy's real dad about how he's never around and that he, the stepdad, raised him and glad he did or he wouldn't have turned out to be such a good guy. My buddy leaned over to me and said get that freaking mic off him now. Went to a wedding of an extremely religious couple. About halfway through the ceremony, the bride starts washing her husband's feet like Jesus did for the disciples. I have no idea what it had to do with getting married, but it was very uncomfortable watching a woman bent down scrubbing her almost husband's feet in front of a silent crowd. Oh, this happened at my boyfriend's brother's wedding. They both washed each other's feet, and it was probably the longest and most awkward 7 minutes of my life. I was happy for them though, it was something that clearly meant a lot to them, I just didn't get it. I don't think I've ever been to a wedding that wasn't awkward. 1. My cousin's wedding. He decided to have his bachelor party the night before his wedding. Terrible idea. He showed up 30 minutes late to the ceremony. It was a 90 degree July day and an outdoor wedding. Everyone was miserable. They had written vows about looking into each other's eyes but he refused to take off his sunglasses because he was so hungover. And because he was hiding a black eye from a bar fight. They're still married 15 years later. Somehow. 2. My friend handed out programs at her wedding with a timeline of events, which is fine, but one of the events was first acceptable time to leave if you want to remain friends. She stationed an attendant in the parking lot to note anyone who left before that time. 3. Another friend had a 2 hour secular wedding ceremony. They did all of the unity traditions, candles, biting apples, tying sailors knots, and performed original love songs in alien costumes. There was no indication on the invitation or even in conversations with the couple that it would be this way. 4. At a friend's wedding, the DJ invited single women to come up for the book Atos. Then he says, Widows, you count as single? 2. Come on up several women started crying. The groom was the only survivor from his marines unit that was attacked in Afghanistan. And he had invited the wives and girlfriends of his fallen comrades. The DJ apparently didn't know that. Oops. How much can go wrong with one wedding? Let's count. 1. The bride was late to the ceremony because her hairdresser had more important clients that took priority to getting her to her wedding on time. People wondered if she got cold feet. 2. The photographer was really slow. As in, post-ceremony pictures took 90 minutes. Guests were already leaving the reception before the wedding party arrived. 3. The bride fell head over heels, not just in love, but face first while walking into the reception hall during the wedding party introductions. 4. The table centerpieces at the reception hall were lovely, that is until they all caught fire at exactly the same time during the reception, they're still happily married years later.
The table centerpieces at the reception hall were lovely. That is until they all caught fire at exactly the same time during the reception. Metal. At my friend's second wedding, officiated by his sister, when announcing them as a couple she accidentally called his new wife by his ex-wife's name. Everyone fell silent. I considered lighting myself on fire for some relief. We were on a break. At a friend of an ex's wedding, the bride didn't look at her groom once during the ceremony. She looked up, around, at her parents, not once at him, even during their vows. She was there for the show, more than anything. They walked into the reception together holding hands, an entry to Pink's let's get this party started. She immediately dropped his hand and ran to her family. He was left dumbfounded. We were served champagne and asked to wait for a toast that never came. Peculiar things around the reception. Gorgeous venue and open bar. BTW. Like there only being photos of her in her dress and her ex-boyfriend dancing with her. Just bizarre. Rumor has it that she had a parental lock on the TV while they were dating. Saved herself for marriage and would regulate other things in his life. Like not letting him see his friends. This was 3 years ago. Still married, as far as I know, with a kiddo. Poor bastard. At my sister's wedding, the caterers shoved her off the steps about 10 minutes before the ceremony. She walked down the aisle with blood stains all over her dress. Bad timing. The sheriff where I grew up was married 4 times. While previewing the venue for his fourth wedding, he lost track of his fiance. He yelled his previous wife's name several times in front of other people. Don't feel bad for him. His first marriage was to a 14 year when he was 20. He started to target me by getting weirdly friendly when I was 9 and also targeted another young girl in town. Thank frick my mom noticed and tipped off the other girl's parents. I have an aunt who loves to dance. She will dance anywhere. She decided the most appropriate time and place to dance was while the bride was walking down the aisle. Because no one in the family can tolerate her she always sits next to me. She used my fork. Swapped our desserts because she didn't like vanilla pudding. Then she tried to eat it. The best bit was during the speeches she burst into tears because she never found someone to love and she feels like she wasted her life. Made everyone feel bad for being pee at her. When? During the vows, the groom had written his own ad were heartfelt and genuine, and then the bride says ditto, then after that got pretty much no laughs. She went into this speech about how annoying she would be during the marriage, for example, I won't pick up the towels from the floor, I will always leave dirty dishes in the sink for you, etc. A marriage lasted 6 months. I was conducting a brass pipe organ ensemble for my friend. We were in the middle of a beautiful tune and the organist went to turn a page in her book. She accidentally knocked the book onto the keyboard and yelled frick at the same time the book crashed on the keys and let out a blast like a train horn. Only those closest to her actually heard her outburst. Unfortunately, that included the minister, the bride, and myself. The minister and bride were stunned and stared openly at the organist. I tried mightily to stifle laughter and eventually had to leave the room. The organist meekly picked up her book and kept playing. Oh man. There is nothing in the world that would keep me from laughing in this situation. The bride's father gave a speech and talked about how it was tough raising his daughter mostly by himself. He is divorced. This included talking about her getting her first period, as well dealing with the time her first boyfriend got mad at her because she wouldn't give him a blowjob. Awkward. Before the marriage ceremony my dad's then girlfriend came up to my brother and I and said, You are my sons now. You are in my family now. You. Are. My. Sons. It was very strange to hear someone command you to be their son. I've learned to stop questioning my dad's life decisions. Initiate maternal love and compassion. Probably not your average idea of awkward, but in this one family wedding the bride set the reception place on fire. When she threw the bouquet it got caught on a nearby ceiling fan and utterly destroyed. Then the plastic cloth thingy involving the flowers got caught on the mechanism or something and it almost immediately short circuited. Cue in slightly small fire that was not enough to burn the place to the ground, but enough to have to evacuate all the 300 plus guests. Waiting for co-workers of mine, 
The DJ is introducing the bride and groom after the wedding party. They come in and the groom dances way ahead of the bride. She lags back and the groom starts freak dancing grinding on one of the bride's maids. Awkward. Time for the toasts. The best man starts off by saying he has known them both for a few years. He then goes on to make sure everyone knows that he had sex with the bride before the groom. Time for the maid of honor. She starts off by saying something like no one ever thought these two would go through with getting married. Guess we will have to see how long before this ends. Five years later and they are still together. Lasting longer than I thought. The groom dances way ahead of the bride. She lags back and the groom starts freak dancing grinding on one of the bride's maids. Awkward. Time for the toasts. The best man starts off by saying he has known them both for a few years. He then goes on to make sure everyone knows that he had sex with the bride before the groom. What the frick? Well to do friends got married on a public beach. They had the financial and political clout to shut down the beach. But instead chose to only cordon off the seating area and pergola so normal beachgoers could enjoy a nice summer day at a respectful distance. Super trashy beachgoers flocked to gawk at the whole thing and fought them every possible camera angle. I'm talking old guys in speedos with sunburn pot bellies putting beach chairs so close they were touching the guest chairs. Someone groped a bridesmaid and was promptly arrested in the sands nearby while screaming. Another person decided to walk down the aisle and get close oops. Removed by a burly guest. There was lots of heckling. Though primarily of a political figure that was present. The reception was in a tent in a park nearby. It was amazing and tent means canvas palace in this instance. And interlopers crashed and were removed by the large contingent of plain clothes police in a non-stop stream. Seriously. Drunk beachgoers were just gathering and making runs at the tent. Trying to reach the bar. Then they loudly played dumb when caught. And got louder when forcibly removed. Luckily it was hard to hear things going on outside the tent. The bride and grooms were good sports and the wedding and reception were still great. But don't get married in public on the Jersey Shore. I was like what is going on and then you said Jersey Shore and I was like of course. Wife's sister's fourth. Or fifth. Wedding. They had enough self awareness to low key it. And in fact it was a surprise wedding. Everyone had been invited to a party. And the couple got married. Without having told anyone it was going to happen. That wasn't the awkward part. The bride's brother took on the giving the bride away role. Including a speech at the dinner table. Poor fella has always been a lightweight on booze. And got caught on the hop. His welcome to the family speech devolved into a drunken ramble about brothers-in-law coming and going for his many sisters. Short marriages and family instability. Getting close. But not quite at the fully awkward part. Suddenly, our hero locked eyes with me in the crowd. He realized I had actually managed to remain married to his baby sister for 20 years. And counting. The rest of the speech was therefore dedicated to what a great bill I was. But the rest seemed to just come and go. While he stood next to his newest bill. I've seen at least 150-200 weddings. Lots of uncomfortable sexual references in the toasts or uncomfortable mentions of previous relationships, but two stories stick out in my mind. One, a Chinese woman and a very awkward white man were set to be married. I worked for the venue, so I was standing outside of the chapel waiting to open the doors for the bride to enter, when she turned to me and asked with a scared look in her eyes can you call me a cab. I responded by laughing right there in front of her thinking it was a joke. It was only when I realized I was the only one laughing that she was entirely serious. I opened the doors when I was instructed to because honestly, I didn't know what else to do. I saw the groom's face. He looked like he was having the best day of his life and excited to marry a woman he loved. She stopped halfway to him and began to cry. Not the I'm so happy crying. The holy crap what have I gotten myself into kind of crying. That was the last of the wedding ceremony I witnessed. I'm certain it didn't get any less uncomfortable for anyone else. The reception was equally as awkward. Throughout the night he was trying to dance with her to nearly every song. She would either reluctantly agree or dismiss him altogether. I couldn't understand why this guy couldn't tell she really didn't love him at all. Later on in the night I heard murmurings that she was only marrying him for a visa. TL. DR. Woman is clearly marrying a guy for a visa. He was obviously in love with her and she was obviously not in love with him. It was clear to seemingly everyone but him. 
2, the father of the bride went up to give a toast right after the cake was cut, with about an hour and a half left of the reception. The bride and groom sat down to listen and as his toast reached the 10 minute mark they, along with everyone else, were getting frustrated that he was still speaking. He began with all of the usual wedding toast balls and went off on some completely unrelated tangent about himself. Many many times he said I better wrap this up, only to continue with something about himself, his recent golf game, how he wants to visit Antarctica, and other things that no one should ever talk about on the microphone at an event with a strict time limit that costs thousands of dollars. The bride, his freaking daughter, was motioning for him to stop, but he was having none of it. He only stopped 30 minutes later, grand total of 40 minutes, when he began a tangent about his recent bladder surgery and the bride burst into tears. TL. DR. Got to take a 40 minute cigarette break because the father of the bride wouldn't shut the heck up on the microphone. But in the middle of the annual town rodeo yeah, that's a thing. A bride in a spangly hat, rode to the middle of the ring, is that a term, to meet a groom, both on horseback. They then got married in front of the entire town 85% of whom were drunk and heckling. What is the most awkward moment you ever witnessed? I'll start. I went to lunch with my wife. Our waitress turned out to be a woman I went to high school with. I said hi to her, and before I could introduce my wife, the waitress said, Oh, is this your mom? I swear the temperature in the room dropped 10 degrees. Happened to me, while I was living in Florida, my very mild-mannered mom came to visit. Doing the typical touristy thing, we went to eat at a nearby beachside restaurant in Siesta Key called Icony Deck. While sitting there with her, a waitress came over and brings me another order of the drink I was already drinking. She said the couple up there send this over to you, and pointed to a couple who looked to be a little older than me. Uncertain of the whole situation, I just told the waitress thank you. My mom asked me if I knew that couple, and trying to downplay a weird situation, I just told her I thought I recognized them which I certainly didn't. Throughout our lunch, I noticed the couple smiling and kind of nodding and waving at me. I was polite and just semi-smiled back at them. A few minutes later I noticed that the couple is coming towards our table. They approach and my mom is all smiles and giggles and asking them where they're from and blah blah blah. After the polite conversation they both turned and looked at me directly in the eye and the girl asks. Girl. So. Do you do couples? Me. I'm sorry? Guy. Do you do couples? Me. I don't think I understand what you're asking. Girl. Do you swing with other couples? Mom. What? You know these people. Me. What? No. Mom. No way. Girl. Really? Have you ever thought about it? Mom. Have you? Me. No. No. Then. Just staring all around at each other. Guy. Well. If you ever think about it. Here's our number he puts their number on my drink coaster and they leave. My mom still doesn't believe that I didn't really know them. To this day. TL. DR. My mom thinks I'm a swinger. My wife's stepfather received a W2 in the mail from a strip club addressed to his daughter. He was devastated, especially because he's a very conservative evangelical Christian. Fast forward two years and I'm sitting with the two of them at the one year birthday party of my niece. The party is a little dull, and I say something like, this is a crazy party, I hear as strippers are going show up later. The dad nonchalantly says, we're already sitting with one. To which he replies innocently, are you calling me a stripper dad? Then he goes, I got your W2 from the strip club. Sitting between them at that moment, as the tension was building and panic was setting in, was overbearingly awkward. Her eyes get huge and she yells, you've known this entire time and never said anything? It doesn't matter, the money was good and I was just a cocktail waitress. I swear, I didn't dance. Really, I was just trying to poke fun at a lame kid's party, not start an intervention. I went to Yuck Yucks, comedy club, and they had aspiring comedians as part of the show. This 300 pound girl gets up on stage, gets a laugh with her first joke, but it's downhill from there. After server jokes with no laughs at all, and some awkward silence, 
She says hey guys. I'm so fat I sweat gravy. Even the kitchen and bar went quiet. She turned red, looked around and made a quick exit. I felt really bad for her. I do give her credit for getting on stage. Even though it was probably the beginning and end of her comedy career. There is nothing worse than watching a comedian bombing on stage. My parents always told me a story about when they were out at dinner once they saw a couple on a first or second date. The lady was wearing a wool sweater and she leaned over the table for some reason and the little candle lit her sweater on fire. The awkwardness then ensued as the flame was centralized on her chest and being their first date the man was extremely hesitant to help her because it would mean touching her boobs. It has always been one of my favorite stories. I don't know how many of you have seen Mike the Situation Sorrentino's performance on the roast of Donald Trump last year. But a more awkward moment has not yet been committed. Ugh. Oh man. It's so sad. I very nearly had a bit of sympathy for him towards the end. But not really. You're right. That was extremely awkward for everyone involved. Even home viewers. Junior year of high school. There was this really nice guy who had been trying for years to make the basketball team. He was a senior. We'll call him Jay. After tryouts. The coaches went into the locker room and announced names. If your name was called, you went into the locker room for a pep talk and were cut from the team. Usually the team had 12 people. There were 13 of us standing around. And then the coaches popped their heads out and said they were done and went back into the locker room. Jay lit up. Huge smile on his face and starts jumping for joy. This was his dream. He had been the manager for the prior 3 years and he finally gets to play. After about 5 minutes. The coaches pop back out. Sorry, we made a mistake. Jay, could we see you they had missed his name on the list. And he wound up getting cut. That's really sad. My GF had just gotten a job and decided to take me out to an expensive dinner as a treat. Almost as soon as we're seated we notice the couple at the table next to us have quite a few years between them the guy being much older. Halfway through our dinner their conversation starts to turn for the worst. We just pick up on little things like, woman, I can't do this anymore, man, you knew what this was from the start. This made us think they were just in a rough spot in their relationship until my GF noticed the man was wearing a ring and the woman wasn't. Then we heard, you said you were going to leave her for me. At this point they've caught a significant number of tables attention and the guy was realizing this too. The guy then stands up, slaps an envelope on the table, says well happy freaking birthday. And walks out. Pretty darn awkward for what was supposed to be a nice dinner for me and my GF. TL. DR. Older man takes out younger mistress to fancy dinner and ends things very publicly. I created one. But didn't stay around to see the aftermath. I was planning to buy my wife a KitchenAid stand mixer. And I heard that they recently went on sale at Sam's. The advertisement said that they would no longer carry that particular model. And it was the one she wanted. You know, the one that raises the bowl up rather than just leaning the gear assembly back. Anyway, I found the mixers. With only 5 left, there were about 10 women standing around bitching about who deserved them the most and trying to work it out. I walked in through them like a boss and took one down and walked off. I heard the cat fight commence behind me as I was leaving that aisle. Wife still has the mixer, and that was about 5 years ago. Dang good mixer. Cool guys don't look at explosions. When I was a senior in high school, a friend of mine was browsing through Pornhub, you know, doing his thing, when he made a shocking discovery, a well, known girl who had graduated a few years before was starring in a pee called 18 year old cutie makes her first pee, you can imagine our surprise. The links were shared around and soon everyone had witnessed this young upstanding college freshman getting fricked in the butt. This went on for a while. We heard that it got so bad for her that she had to leave her university and come home for a couple months. Things blew over. We graduated. I spent the summer working at the local frozen yogurt shop. When a familiar looking girl with red hair and her whole family, little sisters, parents and all, walked in. I couldn't place her. I asked her repeatedly where I knew her from. I held up the line questioning her for information. Did she play soccer? Did she come to get yogurt often? Was she friends with this person? Or this person? Or this person? I didn't understand the mortified look on her face. 
and didn't notice the her whole family glaring daggers in my direction. Finally, it hit me. She didn't play soccer. She got fricked by a big black dong on the internet. I let out an audible or then gasped at my mistake. She promptly snapped. Is any of your yogurt sugar free? I replied no. And I've never seen someone storm out of the store so quickly. I hope you at least tried to cover yourself. I mean, almost anything other than a gasping silence. Oh, you. Went to my high school. Dang kids ain't got no class anymore. Watched a first date turn sour when the guy asked to split the bill. I was out with a bunch of friends at a nice restaurant for my friend's birthday. We were just finishing up our first round of pre-dinner drinks when we noticed this couple getting very close touching. Smiles there were. Hand holding. Etc. Things were clearly going very well. And they decided to share some fondue. A terrible idea in and of itself. Don't get me started on fondue. This pair is clearly very into one another, sharing their food, feeding each other fondue, etc. Then, it happens. Sometime during our main course, the guy at the other table asks for the check, and then asks the girl if she's comfortable splitting the bill. She apparently consents, but is clearly very put off by this question. All touching immediately stops, the girl pulls out her smartphone, and the awkward silence at the next table over begins. The server took like 5-10 minutes to come back with a check, and in that time, both the guy and the girl sat on their phones the entire time. I don't think more than 5 words were exchanged between the two of them for the rest of the night. The whole time. Here we are. A group of 8 seriously buzzed friends. Whispering and pointing at this super awkward formerly budding relationship. Clearly just gossiping away about what just happened. I find it hard to believe they wouldn't have noticed, but clearly they were either too embarrassed or too engrossed in ignoring all things outside their phones to acknowledge what had happened. Easily one of my favorite awkward stories. I've actually got two awkward stories to tell. One, I was getting my hair cut by my barber. I've been going to him for a few years, so I knew a little bit about him. So he's cutting my hair, and this woman walks by, and he makes some comment along the lines of I'd like to take her out. She was pretty hot, but I knew he was married. He had his wedding ring on, and he had a picture of his wife on the shelf. So I said jokingly, aren't you married? He gets quiet, takes off his wedding ring, and puts the picture face down. Apparently his wife had just left him. So, yeah, not much conversation after that. 2. I was at work, and a co-worker is coughing pretty bad. I said to him, you're not dying on us, are your Jeff? He laughs and says, no, I don't think so. A week later he finds out he has terminal liver cancer that spread to other parts of his body. He was a real nice guy and it was a shame. Totally called it though. Totally called it though. That's the spirit. I grew up in a college town and used to sneak into keggers. I got busted by the police doing something stupid when I was 13 and had to go on probation for a year. Sometime into that year I went into a house that seemed to have a big enough party that I wouldn't be noticed. Straight to the back where the beer was. I was caught, told it wasn't that kind of party, and escorted out. Lo and behold, my probation officer was on the porch having a beer with friends. Turned out it was her party. Awkward conversation ensued I guess. I was on a metro bus in Seattle, when a crazy homeless guy hops on in the ride free area. He begins talking to himself, then saying crazy crap to other riders. The driver calls him up to the front and tells him to get off. They argue briefly, but he eventually leaves. The woman sitting across from me says to her friend, God I hate that crap. He was staring out the window and says, what woman replies when people act like that? Man. Who woman? That 10. Then the large black man sitting directly behind her says what? Woman. Oh. I. I. Wasn't. I mean I didn't. Black man. No you just didn't see me sitting right behind you here. I was 3 stops from home and got off immediately. Didn't want to see how that one played out. You should have stayed to see how it played out. She probably said no because he called her derpet. As for my own personal embarrassing moment to have witnessed, a guy walked into my store one day, sat down to have a game of settlers, and crapped the floor. He literally spilt semi-solid flan like poo all over our carpet straight from his butt. He actually had the balls to come back after and apologize. 2. 
I was in a park and a guy kicked a ball near me and asked me to kick it back, but my foot was asleep so I pretended I couldn't see hear him and stared at the ground while he made the walk over. Good times. LOL WTF. Probably the worst way to handle that situation. In in junior HS, the kid that sat directly in front of me was a very awkward kid. He would randomly spaz out, yell stuff, and talk to himself. One day in math class he was talking to himself louder than usual and the teacher asked what the problem was. He stood up and said I need to go to the bathroom. The teacher for some reason did not want to let him leave the classroom and told him to sit down. Two minutes later he raised his hand. Not being called on he got up and once again said I need to go to the bathroom. The teacher told him to be quiet and to sit down. Another few minutes passed and he stood up and said yo I really need to go to the bathroom. The teacher got angry and told him to shut up and sit down. The kid sat down and uttered something to himself. A few minutes passed and he kept flinching and getting really jittery. Then suddenly he turned around and just looked at everyone with a giant grin. And soon after the room started to reek of crap and urine. A short time after the grin he grabbed his book bag and just ran out of the room leaving a trail of pee and a pool of urine where he was sitting. He missed school for a few days after that. Nobody really asked about the incident and we just chalked it up to him having some sort of mental disorder. I ran into him years later at a college party, and turns out he was perfectly normal and just liked to frick with people. The whole pee crap incident was him wanting to get out of a test. TL. DR. Guy crap and pee in class to get out of a test. Or maybe the test thing was an excuse to seem a bit more normal and not be known as that weird kid that crap himself in class. Dunno if this one counts. On a trip to Disney World with 4 friends of mine and the GF, I had planned to pop the question without telling anyone. Couldn't trust him to keep a secret. So the trip goes off without a hitch we get to the spot I picked. Epcot World Pavilion China on a small bamboo bridge over a small stream with a large koi pond. He says yes and is ecstatic. My friends, only two of the four were with us. Kind of gave a different response. My friend Jen ran up to both of us and gave us big hugs and got all soppy eyed. Bitter BF literally said to me, did you do what I think you just did with the slightest hint of a frown? I replies of course, why he doesn't reply for a few minutes, then gives me a half acid gratz and a pat on the shoulder. He never told me as we ended up not speaking with them only a few months after the engagement. I then find out they got married and heard that I had perhaps fricked up his proposal plans. Whoops. A week before my friend gets married we're all out drinking minus his faints. One other friend's girlfriend gets too drunk and decides now's a good time to tell him that nobody likes his girlfriend. We all think she's a B and he shouldn't marry her. Man did that kill the night. Unfortunately it was all true. I have the same story, only I'm the drunk girlfriend and the fiancé was there. They got divorced in 8 months. Was standing around at graduation next to two guys whose names were alphabetically very close to mine. We're staring out into the parking lot making casual small talk when a lady drives by in a suburban. The guy to my right goes, holy crap that's the most disgusting, hideous, piece of crap I've ever seen. I thought that was a dude for a second. People like that deserve to die the other guy quietly says, dude, that's my mom. I knew it was his mom too because she worked as a lunch lady in the cafeteria. It was so incredibly mean and unfortunate that I just froze for a few seconds, died a little on the inside, and walked away. I was in Spain with a former girlfriend, we are on the beach in Nerja. People were gathered around pointing at an object in the sea. After many exchanges a lot of people thought that someone was drowning. I grabbed someone's float, after deciding that no one was doing anything and proceeded to enter the, the choppy waters Baywatch style. After a run and a dive I managed two strokes. I was unceremoniously dumped back on the beach whilst being watched by the holiday making crowd coughing and spluttering. Trying to recover my pride. A young strapping Adonis then entered the water, without obvious bravado swam out, got to what we thought was a drowning boy, only to find it was a multicolored ball. He swam back to rapturous applause. He struts up to me and lifts me off. Carrying me like a bride, the beach, consoles me for 15 minutes. For the rest of the holiday I was known as the black man who couldn't swim, go figure the stereotype. Saw the proposal at a basketball game once, during the kiss cam, 
The poor guy must have set it up beforehand because they were the last couple to appear. They cut the music. He got down on one knee and presented the ring. As one does. She turned white. Put her hands up to her face. And promptly turned and ran up the steps to the exit. He quickly shoved the ring in his pocket and chased after her. The worst part though. As he was running up the steps. They hit the buzzer. Bring her up. I personally would have chosen the price is right trombone. Wah 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 wah. My boyfriend and I went into 7-Eleven to get some snacks. And while I paid he talked to a guy behind the counter that he knew from high school. Last time we were in, the guy's wife was pregnant. So my boyfriend asked something like, So, have that new kid yet turns out the guy's wife had miscarried, which he solemnly told my boyfriend. But we're going to try again, he said. Now I always have to go into 7-Eleven alone to check to see if the guy's there or not before my boyfriend will join me. It wasn't his fault. He shouldn't avoid him. My husband and I were at the outback and could tell the couple sitting next to us was on their awkward first date. They ordered an awesome blossom appetizer. When the appetizer arrived, the guy said to his date in a sheepish, awkward voice I, I think you're an awesome blossom. She didn't even give him a courtesy laugh. Just kind of stared downward and picked at the food. His half smile faded and they continued to eat in silence. That's so cute. If someone said that to me, I'd give him a big ol' smooch. That broad sense of whimsy is broken. My favorite moment was in New Orleans and a couple near me asked a stranger to take their picture. They held a part iron pose for 40 seconds and then asked if he knew which button to push. He said he did and they went back to their painfully staged wacky pose for 30 more seconds and he held back taking the pic. They asked again and then the guy showed him which button to push. The couple gets back into their spontaneous wild time pose and hold it for 30 more seconds until the guy drops the pose and heads toward the guest photographer who snaps a picture of the guy's chest. I couldn't tell if the photographer was an idiot or troll. Either way, I was laughing. So first some background. My 7th grade English teacher was this really awesome and laid back guy, who pretty much lets us do what we want. So I often played games with my friends while also doing research and whatnot. One day he had a sub who wasn't really paying attention. So what the heck. Me and my friends decide to play truth or dare. It goes well at first and we have some good laughs. But then it happened. One of my friends dares me to pick a random girl in the class. Pull her hair. And yell is that a wig so I do. I find some random chick. Proceed to yank off her wig, and proclaim for the whole class to hear is that a wig holy crap I've made a huge mistake. She actually has a wig. I slowly walk back to my seat and sit down. The girl runs from the classroom crying room. That was not a fun day. TL. DR. Played truth or dare. Ended up yanking off some chick's wig. I never understand why people do this. Comma my 7th grade English teacher was this really awesome and laid back guy, who pretty much lets us do what we want, but he's not in this story. I picked up a girl in my car for a quickie after chatting her up on MSN. We went to a secluded parking lot, did the horizontal hustle and we finished by me in her mouth and she downed my entire delivery. When I asked if she wanted to go home, she said no, just drop me off with my boyfriend. I didn't know she was seeing anyone so the car ride was awkward enough at that point. But when I dropped her off she ran up to her boyfriend and gave him a full on tongue kiss. She didn't have water or gum or a mint in between either. I felt bad for that guy. So awkward to watch. I was eating lunch with some friends a couple years ago, when one of them gets a text from another friend. Still looking down at the text. He says, did you guys hear about derp derp was a guy we went to high school with that used to talk a lot of crap to me and tried to get me jumped a few times. I said, no, why, I hope he did everyone a favor and shot himself. Well, he had. Well, that was awfully nice of him to do for everyone. I was at Red Lobster with a friend of mine when I overheard the waitress ask the lady at the table next to us when she was due. The lady started to cry and said that she was not pregnant, just fat. The waitress apologized and went away. The woman's man friend tried consoling her by telling her that she's not fat, she's just a little chubby. The waitress, who is black, returns and keeps apologizing. Going on and on, 
It would have been best if she had just dropped it but knew. The waitress goes on to tell the woman that the brothers in her hood would love to meet a big girl like her and that it's a good thing being mistaken as being pregnant. That the fellas like big butts. The woman and her man friend got up and left. When I was 16 I started seeing this girl that lived a few states away. After a few years of long distance calls and train rides she decided to call it off. Being the naive boy that I was, I continued to call once a week or so, always getting one of her parents saying that she wasn't available. They were the nicest people. I eventually got the hint. A few months later Christmas came around and I thought it to be a good idea to call and wish them a Merry Christmas, really just wanting to get a hold of my ex. I left a message along the lines of Merry Christmas, hope all is well. Later that day I get a call from her, at first I was happy to hear her voice, but when she started talking I felt sick. Apparently she had moved out of her parents house and moved in with a guy she worked with shortly after we broke up. All that time I was calling her parents house. They didn't have the heart to tell me why she couldn't come to the phone. It was the most embarrassing moment in my life. A few years down the road I find out she had a kid with this guy. Conceived around the time of our breakup. After some internet sleuthing I found a pic of the two of them and the kid. I was well over her by this time. But something about that picture boiled my blood. The guy was wearing my $90 university hoodie that I had long been looking for. That be. A good hoodie is worth its weight in gold. The awkward moment was completely my fault. A co-worker's adult son had recently died. The funeral was on a weekend. The following Monday I see the guy and kinda automatically say hey. Have a good weekend and right about the time I am saying weekend my brain is screaming inside my head shut up you freaking idiot he was burying his kid. Ugh. Felt terrible. Many years ago, I was waiting for a platform to be announced for my massively delayed train at Houston station and one of the trains just arrived. I noticed this dorky looking guy next to me getting really excited. He was wearing a red scarf, carrying a red rose, and pretending to read Harry Potter, though he kept glancing anxiously to the platform where people were disembarking, obviously looking for someone. I got the feeling that he was meeting someone from online, or at least someone he hadn't met before, and the red scarf. Rose and Harry Potter were meant to be how they would recognize each other. Whoever s he was, s he wasn't on that train. Or the one after, or the one after. His excited anxiousness was so terribly touching and awkward, and his dawning realization that the person who he was waiting for was never going to arrive was absolutely heartbreaking. Last week my co-worker turned an extremely embarrassing situation into an epic moment. What other situations have you seen go from awkward to amazing? My older brother was in a meeting with some clients, he is a lawyer, one of the clients, a rather dignified older lady, accidentally farted rather loudly, seeing that she was extremely embraced my brother leaned to one side and farted as well, everyone laughed and my brother said now that we have cleared the air we can get to work, now that is a gentleman. In high school I was a pretty typical, long haired burnout and hung out with such. One of my buddies had a thing for this cheerleader, and one day a few of us we were in the hall and he spots her chatting with some of her friends. He's all, that's it, I'm going to go ask her out. We all, of course, tried to tell him it wasn't a good idea, but he wasn't having any part of it. So, he walks over to her alone while she's still chatting with her friends and gives her this big smile and says, Hey, I know we don't know each other that well besides from class. But I was hoping you would like to go see a movie with me sometime. She responds by literally laughing in his face and then says, With you? I don't think so. This causes all her friends to start laughing as well. He simply keeps the smile and says, Hey, thanks, and turns around to walk away. She yells, I just turned you down, so why are you thanking me this? Of course, gains the attention of everyone in the hall. He then points to us and says, See those guys over there? They each bet me $5 that you're not as stuck up as you look. Years after HS we talked about that day, and he said that while he never did get that date with her, she always smiled and said hi to him whenever they passed. I really hope you each gave him 5 bucks, cause he totally earned it. Okay, long story, so get a cup of coffee. Mate and I were out on the town when we were deployed overseas, this is also an army story. I went out on town with him, being his wingwoman. 
We go around several pubs and I'm keen to go home. Because I'm actually not that great a wing woman and he hasn't scored yet. Then we get an invite to go back to this flat and drink. He ends up hooking up with a girl at the flat and I ask if I can crash on the couch. In the morning, he stumbles out of her room and heads for the bathroom. I get my stuff together and the woman comes out, asking if I want a coffee. Sure I say and sit at the breakfast bar while she makes coffee. My buddy comes out of the bathroom after a while and the woman and I are chatting. There's a coffee there for him and he gulps it down, while still extremely hot, and says we have to go. I tell him to chill out, but he's making the hand signal for hurry up, so I sip a bit more coffee then make my apologies and leave with him. Turns out that in the bathroom, there was no toilet paper, so he used some underwear out of the laundry hamper to wipe his butt with, then put it back. I told him he'd ruined his chances of ever seeing that woman again and that we should try not to run into her again. But we did run into her again, at another pub the next weekend. She came running up to us, all smiles and was keen on hooking up with my mate again. I asked her how she had been and she said, oh, not bad, but we had to kick out our flatmate, we found out he'd been wiping his butt on our laundry. I went and got a cup of chocolate milk, frick the police. In high school I had an algebra teacher who might have been one of the coolest teachers I've ever known. But it was a hot afternoon and someone suggested opening the windows so some kid yells to the window then another, to the wall. Of course the teacher knows what is coming so she gives the warning teacher look. But some smartest kid opens his mouth and adds, till the sweat drops down my balls. The class was in an uproar until the teacher yelled, now all you be crawl, right back to this math problem. In 12th grade I was an uncomfortably socially awkward geek. I sat behind a ridiculously attractive and popular boy in history class. We were somewhere between friends and acquaintances as we never hung out but we were comfortable around each other. Anyway, one day when placed into pairs and we have to play a Jeopardy like game. I'm paired with said attractive boy, and we end up getting a few questions right. He goes into fist bump me, I give him a high five. The most awkward silence of my life ensues. My cheeks are burning. I'm stammering, and then he laughs and says, that's totally going to be our thing from now on, and it was, and it was awesome, I really liked that guy. Instead of going to high five him, you should have put your hands on each side of his fist and made a tie fighter. I was a waitress when I was about 15. One night, the restaurant was packed out, and I was carrying several plates of food up the stairs in the middle of the restaurant, to the balcony, of course. I tripped, the food went flying and I landed flat on my face. I was so embarrassed, I didn't move for all of about 20 seconds. The whole place had gone silent, and I knew everyone was looking at me. I eventually got up, looked at the stunned faces of my audience and took a bow. All the customers cheered and clapped and I got more tips than I ever had before that night. I do this every time I smash a glass behind the bar. That or I look around and fake elevator my way out of the situation. On a high school band trip, about grade 10, sharing a hotel room with three other dudes, I realize I've got a severe case of the squirts. I spend the first two days not eating much and trying to take as much anti-diarrhea medicine as my body can handle, but by the third day I'm starving, so I cave and eat some delicious A&W. That night at about 5am, sharing a bed with a pal, two other guys in the bed next to me, my butt just explodes while I'm sleeping. Just a full on shit fest. I wake up before anyone else and embrace the horror of what has happened. If I can't somehow get out of this I will be the guy who crapped the bed on the band trip for the rest of high school. Complete social suicide as I see it. But as luck would have it, no one had woken up yet. I move quickly and pull the sheets from under my still unconscious bunkmat. Bunch them up so you can't see any of the crap covered parts, and put them outside the room for the maid to deal with. I take my boxes and rinse them as best I can in the bathtub and hang them up to dry, and get ready for the day. My roommates gradually wake up and start asking questions. Guy 1. Why did you put the sheets outside? Me. At the last hotel I stayed in, that's what we did. Guy 2. Why are your boxer shorts wet and hanging up? Me. I was so darn tired this morning, I got into the shower with them on. Can you believe that? Guy 3. Why does your side of the bed smell like you crap the bed? Putting their faces right on ground zero and giving a big sniff. I crap you not. Me. 
I've been pretty gassy this whole trip. I must have farted a lot in my sleep. Guys 1-3. Okay I'm satisfied with those answers. Somehow, beyond all logic, my bulls convinced them. In my final year of high school, I sat all three guys down, along with a few other friends, and told this very story. At this point, enough time had passed that it was just hilarious, plus my quick thinking had averted high school pariahism. This man is my hero. Anyone that can cover up an embarrassing moment with a Zap Brannigan reference is alright in my book. LOL. As a hot Korean chick, I can confirm that men like that are indeed the best. When I was in middle school, I was running the mile alongside one of my friends. He somehow managed to get our feet tangled up and we both began falling. But I was not about to let my face or hands run into the concrete. Oh no. Instead I managed to do an entire James Bond. Esque somersault and hopped back up and began running again with not a bit of momentum lost. And best moment of my middle school years. A little preface. Here, I'm a DJ at a small strip club on the outskirts Portland, or, we have no security, and quite often the task of ejecting rowdy customers falls upon either myself or my bartender. No offense to women, but my bartender is quite frequently a woman. While I'm certain that both the female bartenders I work with could very likely hold their own in a fight, what normally happens when a female, either directly or indirectly, incites a physical altercation with a man or group of men is that the violence is almost always deferred to the nearest male who appears to be in collusion with said instigaton female. I actually know how to fight quite well, so this basically means that I'm pretty much the unspoken bouncer of the place when I'm here, should something go down. A few weeks ago a bunch of brotards, about 5 or so, rolled up into my club acting like they owned the place. Long story short, my bartender, the one I'm least sure could hold her own in a fight, kicked them out and it was basically up to me to convince them to leave without a physical incident. This might not have been a problem, except I had some exceptionally drunken, read falling down. Customers who insisted on helping me kick these guys out. All these guys were really doing was edging me ever closer to getting my butt kicked by three guys. Two of the group I was trying to eject were too drunk to fight and wouldn't have been a problem. I can fight, but I can't fight three people at once. And these dudes were on the bigger side. Cue the pushing and the shoving. Tough guy routines. The whole nine. I'm in the middle of a 5 on 5 brawl that's about to break out into a game of smear the queer and I'm the one sucking dong. So anyway, we're in the parking lot and the drunkest of my backup customers decides. Well, I have no idea what he decided. I think, in his head, he thought he was going jump over this jetta that was between him and some of the brotards and pull off some kind of super sweet action hero maneuver. What actually happened was that he just kind of spastically threw himself into the rear fender of the Jetta and crumpled into a heap on the ground. Time stopped for a second and everyone busted out laughing at him for a solid minute or so. We finally stopped laughing and I told the Jaguars to leave and they did. They were dongs about it. But in all likelihood if it weren't for that kid trying to Jackie Chan one of those guys faces and I would have had a serious situation on my hands. Thank you. Random drunken moron. Thank you. Addendum, it occurs to me that a good friend and regular customer who wasn't quite so s-faced and is also no stranger to a scrap also had my back in the situation. Regardless, before the drunken master concussed his way to a standing ovation, we were looking at a full-on bar brawl. Then a wannabe helpful drunk, tried to vault a jetter's trunk, and thus averted a barroom blitz. So the whole pack of huge dongs, laughed at the drunken aerobics, and averted a barroom blitz. Barroom Blitz. I was at a family dinner with two families from my dad's side. My cousin was 16 at the time. The rest of my family were talking about some guy and how they wish that she had dated him because he looked so lovely and was intelligent. My cousin is looking awkwardly into her plate and I can't have that. They bring up how it's a shame that he got shacked up with some girl because he got her pregnant. And I say, well clearly he wasn't that intelligent. He doesn't know how to use a condom. My family was stunned and my cousin was all smiles for the rest of the night. Way to stick up for her man. Going back to my school days and sports. Now, I hate sport. Truly. Freaking hate it. 
I'm no good at it, I have no interest in watching it, it just bores me. I'm not exactly unfit, just quite scrawny. And as it goes in school, those who were into their sport hated me. We were doing long distance running, and me hating the idea of running. And with no teachers around part of the course, I skip a big chunk out. We were doing staggered starts, and I misjudged slightly and ended up getting one of the top 3 times. Earning me a place in the top 3, and a chance to run on the sports day. Crap, all the kids who hated me complained like heck to the tutors, but they were having none of it, and entered me regardless. So, I find myself on sports day, warming up to run the 1500 meters. Crap crap crap. All the other runners were properly into their sport, had decent running gear, isotonic drinks, energy bars and the like. I had a bottle of water and a banana, and was wearing converse and swimming shorts. My plan was to make it look like I was trying hard, then fake a sprained ankle or something and duck out once I got too tired. As we lined up on the line, I suddenly thought, frick it, how hard can it be to run 1500 meters really fast? The gun went, and I pretty much sprinted off the line, and didn't slow down. After the first lap of 4, it started to hurt. I ignored it. Second lap, still in first, really hurting now. Third lap, I wasn't thinking now, just running for dear freaking life. Fourth lap, and the guy in second passes me. Frick it, I've got this far. How much more can it hurt? I full on sprint the last lap. By now my body is aching so much I can barely see straight, but I keep on going. On the final straight, I pass the guy, pummel myself over the finish line, and pass out. A couple of minutes later I wake up, proper confused, and ask what the heck happened. Find out I won, and just laugh. I still have the trophy and certificate somewhere. Now, to make all this relevant to the topic, I found out, a year or so later, that the tutors all knew I'd cheated, and entered me into the sports day to teach me a lesson. They wanted me to crash and burn in front of everybody, and they'd told the other students this behind my back. Granted, I did crash and burn, but only after I'd finished the race. Nobody could quite believe it, and I royally pee off the other runners who all seriously gave a crap about coming first. They hated the tutors after that. The lesson. Dear reader, don't enter kids and sports days for a laugh. They might just decide they actually want to win. This is something that was absolutely motivating to read. Thank you. One day, when I was in 9th grade or so, I was standing outside the PE lockers and I was conversing with two hot girls, one of which I had a crush on, and then a random douchebag runs behind me and pulls down my shorts. I was mortified. I just stood there as the girls stared at me. Right then, when my pants were still around my ankles, another guy pulls down his pants and says hey, I have those boxers too then his friends started pulling down their own pants and comparing boxers right in front of everyone. That is one of my fondest memories in high school. Not really the most embarrassing story but it comes to mind so I'll tell it. I was an overworked underpaid bus buyer at a crappy establishment that were always such b if any plates got broken. They totally exaggerated the cost of their dishes to try to deter me from being so flippant about their breaking. It was minimum wage though so I never gave a frick. Anyway I was collecting a couple from the dining room and they must have slipped from my grip or something and shattered on the floor. A bunch of diners stopped what they were doing, looked at me and it was that silent awkward moment where everyone pretends like it's a big deal. But I defused it by waiting a beat and then saying well at least now I don't have to wash them and everyone started laughing. Not spectacular, I know, but I felt slightly triumphant. Got too drunk. Touched my best friend's jertle friend's boob. Next morning my group of friends confronts me about it. I reply I was just looking for a slap and a pickle. Hilarity ensues. I followed that with an apology. Naturally. You know what would be terrifying? If a bunch of foreign soldiers burst in on me while I was naked. Shining flashlights and holding things that look like guns. Me and my pal were the last ones left on a night out and the intention was to head to his house and just crash there as it was closer. We decided we'd get another beer and stay for a short while before heading off. This woman comes over and she ends up coming back with us. I slept on the couch and he took her into his room. He woke me up the next day. She had left, 
and he was saying have a look at this. I went into his bedroom and there was crap all over his sheets. He stuck it up her poop chute and when he pulled out, a barrage of crap followed. Being so drunk he ignored it and fell asleep on the floor. She must have left soon after that of her own accord but before she left she wrote her blackberry pin and the crap on the bed. He added it and they were dating for a while. I thought it was truly brilliant. She didn't have a pen so she improvised. Definition of brilliant. 1. Very bright. Glittering. A brilliant light. 2. Uh, striking. Distinctive. A brilliant example. B. Distinguished by unusual mental keenness or alertness. I just wanted to make sure I understood the definition of the word brilliant, because I do not believe writing your number in crap qualifies. I played a chess football. One day we were having a team BBQ and running around like fools distracting each other while someone came from behind pulling their pants down. There was one kid who didn't talk much, and we decided to get him. Pulled down his pants to reveal his whitey tighties. Instead of scrambling to pull them up embarrassed, he put his hands on his hips, puts up his chin and says I'm not ashamed as proudly as you can imagine. He was our new favorite person afterwards. Two stories. One, this was like 10 years ago, when I was a cadet, we work in civil air patrol. One requirement to become an officer is a dumped down boot camp style event called encampment. Anyway, we had this one cadet, let's call him Cadet Snuffy. He was notorious for taking the longest latrine breaks of anyone. One night, during free time we had a fire drill, so everyone runs out and forms into their units, and start making sure everyone was there, receiving the report. Welp, Snuffy wasn't there, so my unit starts wailing about how Cadet Snuffy died honorably in the blaze. Poor Snuffy, he died in the fire. So while we are doing that, we hear wait, wait, I didn't die. I put the blaze out and out runs Snuffy carrying used charlotte paper he dumps into a nearby trash can. Turns out he was on the latrine and ran down three stories while cleaning himself and pulling his pants up in under 90 seconds. To a game we work. I was staffing an encampment. I was flight sergeant. During free time, our flight commander was with us in our barracks. The flight CMDR starts talking about chicks. All male flight, in graphic detail. And then goes oh crap. I forgot to ask, is anyone 12 one cadet goes I am 12. So the flight commander replies go stand outside. I want to talk about chicks poor cadet had to stand outside for an hour. This happened back in high school. I was chatting with some friends during lunch, when while leaning back in my chair, the legs break off and the chair collapses. Everyone heard and looked at me, so I picked up the chair in one hand, the legs in the other, and stooped round with the most triumphant expression I had. The whole cafeteria cheered and clapped for me. My favorite teacher was one of the lunch monitors that period. So he came over and took the chair while I tried not to burst out laughing. So after all that, I grab a new chair, sit back down with my friends, and continue, as I was saying, and then we all starting lodging. Every time I'm left hanging I high five myself. Also if I see someone else left hanging and I am significantly inebriated bored I will swoop in and high five them while yelling interception. In college we could go to a larger city to drink and look at hopefully hook up with ladies. We would rent a room, go to the local douche attraction, and I would typically drink too much and forget about girls, and go to the room trashed. My friend once hooked up with a lady and I went back to the room alone. Later that week he realized he got the clap, went to the health center and got the pills and mailed some to her. Six months go by, we do the exact same thing and he finds the same girl and hooks up with her again. Bingo, you guessed it he got the clap again. I just think of that crap and laugh and laugh. In college, I was at a dance bar and walked up to a fairly hot chick who I had a few classes with and asked hey, would you like to go dance she was with a group of her friends. She looked at me, rolled her eyes and said, I don't think so, very condescendingly. Without even missing a beat I said to her, I'm sorry, I think you misunderstood me, I said you look fat in those pants, and walked away. One time they had to place me on third base in a softball in school, and I suck at ball games but they have to let everyone play each position and no one was happy I was third. Then there was a fly ball and they said to let it go foul but I caught it. I was king of the world for 30 seconds.
Hanging out with my friends in a loud bar. I grab one of my buddies and walk up to a group of girls on the dance floor. As I walk up to the girl in charge of the other girls. I walk up and as everyone has eyes locked on me. I ask loudly over the music hey. Do you want to dance? The girl then turns her head and looks to her friends as to say. I'm about to crush this kid. She looks at me and yells over the music no. I then put my head closer to pretend I could hear what she said over the music and make her repeat it. She says no a second time I say even louder than before no. I don't want to dance. I said you look fat in those pants as I point to butt. Then without missing a step I walk to the other side of the dance floor. The look on the girl's face I could feel her mouth drop from around the corner. The whole group not only left the dance floor for the rest of the night. They left the bar shortly after. My buddy went back and told the rest of our group. It was one of many highlights that spring break week. Stuff of legends. In one of my ancient history classes we were having a Sparta versus Athens debate. My group was Sparta as the debate progressed my group got less and less interested and eventually began answering every question with something along the lines of oh yeah well try and go to war with us. You didn't think so. Go read a book. Try not to diddle any children while you're at it. The teacher began getting less patient with our group and finally decided to call it quits. She yelled at our group for about 5 minutes. We were all pretty irritated like 18 year olds get when they get embarrassed in front of their peers. She said, okay now you leech prepare a final statement right before the bell. Since I was the leader of the group I had to stand and speak for Sparta. My exact words were, we might not be the brightest Greek state, because all we do is fight and conquer the others, but I'd rather be a dumb oaf than send my kid out to play with Plato all day. That's pretty great of him to turn that onto a funny situation. You really could have felt like a dong blocking douchebag without that save. Was Tay for the class, running late. Tried to sneak in as quietly as possible and sat on the chair in the corner. Well the chair was broken and I fell right down. Probably should mention majorly all guys in the class and I am a girl. And the prof gave me a look like and this is my Tay really? Anyways this guy nearby sort of laughed and said yay the same thing happened to me in the morning. Not epic, but definitely took some stress off. I was in year 10 and was in a pay lesson. Now I never liked those classes before. Didn't really the because I wanted to play football but had to do the girl sports. Anyway, because of doing karate and taekwondo non-stop all summer, I had become extremely good at sports. Now we were just sprinting across the field, but it was a little damp and I lost my footing and slipped. Everyone began to laugh, they were mostly all behind me, until they realized I had gone straight down into front splits. I had one foot in front, one behind. I just jumped back to my feet and carried on running to everyone's surprise. I ended up with the nickname ninja by the end of the year. I had girls complaining they couldn't do pay with me because I was too good or too rough. They were all wimps. On my first day back from the summer, our year group was merged with the crap school up the road. In front of a load of people. My new form. I decided to jump this wall as a shortcut. I somehow didn't quite make it, catch my foot and fall. I turned it into a roll and just carried on walking like nothing had happened. Half the class were laughing at me, the other half were impressed that I didn't complain about falling having a huge bruise on my arm. I was hanging outside of the computer room one lunchtime. I had nowhere else to go and the room was closed. A group of other kids were there as well. So they decide the fun thing to do would be to push me inside the male teacher's toilet after one had gone in. They charged at me forcing me into the corner. They then opened the door next to me to trap me next to the toilet do. They tried to push one door into the other, forcing me into the male toilet. I somehow managed to squeeze off out the tiny gap and they fell into the toilet instead. I turned around and burst out laughing as they retreated red faced with an angry teacher behind them. Most of the time when embarrassing things happened, I wasn't bothered by it and just shrugged it off. I get more embarrassed when I say something stupid than when I do something stupid. What's the most embarrassingly awkward situation you ever encountered while staying at a friend's house as a kid? My friend's mom, Mrs. I was an amazing woman. When I was around 7 I was attending a sleepover at my friend's house. We were getting ready for bed. A few of us were waiting in the hall. And one of the other girls was taking forever in the bathroom. I had to go really bad. Mrs. 
I was standing in the hallway near me when it happened. I lost control and peed my pants right there. And luckily, none of the others noticed it except Mrs. A. You know what that wonderful woman did? She suddenly shrieks something about a spider and accidentally throws the glass of juice she happened to be holding all over me. She made a big enough fuss to draw all attention away from me grabbed a towel and wrapped me up while apologizing profusely about how she's terrified of spiders and lost control. She gave me spare pajamas to wear while she washed my clothes and had me take a shower so I wouldn't attract ants. None of the other girls had any idea what really happened and thought Mrs. I was nuts. She's my hero. She sounds like a wonderful woman. How about while a friend was staying at my house? Friend was supposed to spend the night, but her mom didn't come to pick her up in the morning, or the morning after that. I don't remember how long she stayed, but after 2-4 days, my mom eventually drove my friend to her, my friend's, grandmother's house. I was at my best friend of 10 years' house, and in the middle of dinner with his family, his parents decided to announce to their children, and me, that they would be getting a divorce and splitting up the family. My friend didn't talk much that night, and the worst part was that I couldn't leave, because my parents were out of town and I was staying with them. You were the control group. I was at a group sleepover for a neighbor's birthday party, at night when I wanted to sleep. The girls were being way too loud, so, I went to go sleep in her brother's room. He was out at his own sleepover. I opened the door and saw that their aunt was in the bed. No big deal, except she shouted close the door or I'll slit your freaking throat. I was 9. What the frick? That's insane. Went upstairs at a friend's house so she could ask for her mother permission to walk downtown. Mother and boyfriend are nude. Clearly have just finished having intercourse and make no move to cover themselves from other people's 11 year old's eyes. Maybe adult nudity shouldn't be a big deal, but my friend was clearly embarrassed. Her mother had also been separated from her father for less than a year at the time. Her older sister came into the room as we were leaving to ask them how the frick they thought having sex with the door open was appropriate in the middle of the afternoon in a house full of neighboring children. I was at a friend's house when we were both 11-12 years old. I had the bright idea of biking down to the nearest grocery store to get snacks so he asked his dad for permission. His dad said no, so my friend started arguing, then crying, then throwing an all-out temper tantrum. He ended up getting spanked and sent to his room while I got a ride back home. I just sat and stared at the wall the whole time it was going down and felt like it was my fault because I suggested it. I know that feeling. Had to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night and ended up plugging the toilet. I figured if I keep flushing it'll go down. Nope. Flooded the bathroom with poop water. Another time. Same friend same toilet also in the middle of the night. The water pipe was frozen but I really had to go. So I ended up leaving a big rank pile of liquidy crap in the dry bowl. In the morning the whole downstairs smelled awful and his parents wouldn't make eye contact. You figure that they won't invite you back after the first time. At a buddy's house in like 4th grade, him and his little brother were arguing about whose turn it was to do the dishes. The dad got pee grabbed them both by the head and slammed them together. It made that lovely thwack sound. They both started crying and the dad turns and says to me you think Theo will do the dishes now. I was quite scared and left ASAP. Oh god. I was maybe 10 and staying over at a friend who had moved across town's house. Somewhere in the middle of the night he and his brother decided to strip completely naked and shake their dongs around wildly. I was confused of course and then they tried to get me to join. When I told them I wasn't having any of that they tried to wrestle my clothes off of me. I broke free, called my mom on the home phone, it was like 230am, and waited out front for her to pick me up. Never talked to Tyler again. I know a guy named Tyler in college and he does the dong shake randomly to pee of other guys. When I was in the 4th grade, I had a friend who I spent every weekend with. We stayed at his house and watched movies or played games. This particular day, we were about 5 hours into a Grand Theft Auto playthrough. We ran out of things to talk about, so we had been pretty quiet for a while. He turned to me, with the biggest smile on his face and let out one of the biggest farts I've ever heard. I knew that I had to try to beat his fart, so I'll let one out. It wasn't as loud, 
but it was much longer. We both sat there for a bit laughing, when he let another one rip. It was even louder and longer than both of our other farts combined. Try and beat that one he said. I prepped myself, getting ready for the fart of my life. I looked him in the eyes and let that fart fly. Only, there was no fart, but there was a filling feeling in my pants. Are you going to do it he hadn't caught on that I just filled my pants with crap right in his room. I told him that he beat me and I excused myself to the bathroom. I sat there for 20 minutes trying to figure out what to do. I finally made my decision. I emptied his bathroom garbage, took the bag and stuck my poopy underwear in it. I stuck the bag in my pocket and left the bathroom. Hey man, what took so long I'm leaving? Why shut up? I ran towards the door, jumped on my crappy BMX bike, and pedaled as fast as I could back to my house. TL. DR. Grand Theft Poopy Pants. Not gonna lie you handled that pretty dang well. Kid's dad brings us dinner at the table. He gets a sippy cup. His dad asks me if I need one or if I can be trusted not to spill on the table. I say I don't need one. I immediately knock my drink all over the table. We were at least 10 years old. I knock drinks over regularly now. I was at one of my friend's houses for Easter this year and all of his aunts were drinking wine out of sippy cups so that they wouldn't spill when they were all blackout drunk. Not a terrible idea. I was staying over at a friend's house with a couple other neighborhood kids. My friend's parents essentially locked my friends and I in the basement for the night so we could have our sleepover down there. And once the door was shut my friend's parents get into a huge fight over some inane crap. It was horrible. It sounded like they were screaming at the absolute top of their lungs, throwing plates around, flipping furniture, and at one point I think I heard one of them threaten to get a gun and start shooting. But the worst part was the two hours of angry makeup sex in their creaky bed that followed their tirade. AWW that's so sweet that they made up afterwards. I went to spend the night with a girl from class for the first time. I was excited too. She was one of those girls everyone was afraid of and I was really timid and shy. Within an hour of getting there, her mom and sister got into a huge screaming argument. The mom stabbed herself in the leg with a butcher's knife. As a result of the fight, I'm not sure why, her dad loaded up the mom, sister, my friend and me into their tiny car to take the mom to the hospital. The mom was stating the whole time she wouldn't go in. We all sat in the parking lot as they argued for about an hour. We drove back to her house without going into the air. Mom, sister, and dad began fighting again. This was around midnight. I called my mom to check in and tell her goodnight and gave her the secret phrase to come home. I forgot to bring my toothbrush. We feigned a family emergency and she came to get me. Never did get an offer to sleep over again. The secret phrase to come get me thing is a really good idea for kiddos spending the night at a friend's house. The time when, at age 9, I marched up to my best friend Becky's mom and said, Becky isn't adopted. Joe just said that she was adopted. Joe was her older brother. Becky's mom just stood there, awkwardly, then said it was time for me to go home. Turns out Becky was adopted. Her parents hadn't told her yet. I have no idea why her brother felt the need to tell me and not his sister. I'm adopted, and one of my siblings would make me cry when I was younger telling me I'm adopted. And my parents didn't tell me for a very long time. I asked my cousin when I was like 13. And I don't know. I cried. I wish they were honest in the first place. My friend had a problem where he wet the bed. One time a few people and I were over at his house and his butthole dad came in his room and berated him about wetting the bed. He was embarrassing him about it and even punished him. He made us all go home because of something my friend couldn't control. I guess you can say that was pretty awkward. That's how my parents, and my niece's parents were with her. She would wet the bed until she was like 8 or 9. That's really not the way to do it. I stayed at a mate's house once when I was around 9. In the morning as I was eating breakfast his dad just decides to sit beside me and pull a bong. At 8 a.m. I was supposed to meet my friend at his house at around 5 because he had some appointment with his mom. I get there at probably 4.45 and head up to their back deck. 
My house was a couple blocks behind his so I always came this way. So I go up to their big glass doors and I see his dad getting railed by the next door neighbor. I have never told him this but I can never be in a room alone with his dad again. TLDR. I saw my friend's dad getting railed. Gay sex people. Friend's dad was getting a penis in his anus. The lesson here is to know your family's schedule. You never know when your son's creepy friend will show up. 3 AM. My friend and I stop playing Halo for a bit and go to get some water cause we were thirsty. Walk into the kitchen to see his dad's girlfriend giving his dad head in the middle of the room. We stayed thirsty all night. Everyone stayed thirsty, except dad's girlfriend. Walked into the toilet in the middle of the night to find his mum shaving her butthole with an electric razor. My friend's sister had a birthday party and I was invited. We were 16. We got really drunk. My friend for the first time, where I live it is legal to get drunk at 16. And when we went home I slept in his bed. My friend's bed is really high up like plus 2 meters and I puked in the middle of the night on him. He slept on the floor, resulting in splashing all over his room. I spend the rest of the night cleaning his room. The next day I got invited for lunch and they made special food for his sister birthday and I could not make eye contact with anyone. So embarrassing. He is still one of my best friends and his room smelled for another 6 months because of my vomiting. Always have a good laugh when we think about this story. At least you can laugh at this rather than being embarrassed about it. 5th grade. Started hanging out with a kid I never really did before and he had a sleepover with our mutual friends for his birthday. Everything was great. Played N64 all night in his basement and his mom was cooking all sorts of food and being generally awesome. Gets late we all start falling asleep in the basement. Then dad gets home drunk as all heck. His parents proceeded to scream and beat the crap out of each other all while we were in the basement witnessing the entire ordeal upstairs. After about 10 minutes we hear his older sister enter the scuffle trying to stop it and get them to calm down and stop. Dad hits the sister. Mom pulls a knife out and starts threatening dad. Sister runs away. Dad throws a lamp and promptly exits the house with various name calling and swearing. All quiet upstairs except for his mom crying. We hear her on the phone and shortly after a cop shows up to file a report, I assume, and an aunt shows up to console mom. We all kind of fall asleep wondering what the frick happened. Next morning we go upstairs and see some damage, but the mess is cleaned up. We try engaging with his mom and she seems okay, just worn down. We offer to take some trash bags outside for her and see some ripped up presents in the garbage can outside. That night his dad took off and filed for divorce not long after, and his sister didn't come home for a few days, until they were pretty positive he wouldn't be back. TLDR. Went to my friend's birthday party and ended up with his parents divorce and sister running away. That's rough. I've only had an experience like that once, but it was recent, and with my ex's sister, and her husband. It was just bad. It wasn't as bad as your story though, but I felt so uncomfortable. I was at my friend's house and his parents told him that after I left he had to take a bath. He started throwing a fit crying and screaming I refuse. I refuse and I just stood there on the steps not knowing what to do. His parents remained calm through the fit but I couldn't take it anymore and kinda slinked out the back door. He was an interesting kid. I was at my friend's house, age 11. Anytime I wasn't in school or at home I was there, so his family was used to me being around. This time a little too much. We were in the kitchen making food, when his dad strolls in after a shower, expecting only his son to be there, and flashes him while letting rip. I'll never forget it, the horror. Amazed that nobody wants to comment on this. Okay, here we go. I was about 12 and sleeping over at a friend's house. There was an argument between him and his brother and they started fighting. Now, I'm lying on the bottom bunk pretending to be asleep when their mother storms in and heads straight to the top bunk, where the fight is happening. At this point I open my eyes to realize that the mother is wearing nothing but a very large t-shirt that goes down to just below the hip. 
The mother reaches the bunk beds and proceeds to reach out to restrain the brothers. In doing so the large t-shirt comes up to reveal what can only be described as a hairy beast. She had no underwear on whatsoever. I look at it for about 8 seconds before the t-shirt covers it again after she's done telling off the brothers. I lie there in shock before exclaiming to my friend I've just seen your mum's fanny. He laughed his head off. TL. DR sleeping at friends. Brothers get into a fight above me on bunk bed. Their mother comes in wearing just a t-shirt. Lifts her arms up to reach the top bunk. I get an eye full of waffle. When he pulled out a machete from under the bed at 3am and said he used it to cut lizard's heads off. In the morning, I walked in on his little brother not masturbating but just playing with his junk in the middle of the living room. I noped the frick out and never went back. Was staying at friend's house in the country for the weekend in 5th grade. They had a lot of animals, including two adorable lab puppies. Unfortunately none of their animals were treated and one of the puppies got distemper and died. I guess it happened quite quickly, I don't know. We were outside and my friend's dad and brother were looking at the other puppy, which was being extremely playful. They said it was a sign of distemper, then they beat the puppy to death with a hammer. No one was happy about this, nor did anyone seem to mind that they were surrounded by kids. I don't know jack crap about distemper. This is the first time I've thought about it in over a decade for sure, so I can't really remember how my 11 year old brain processed that. I remember my friend, a girl, was crying but I wasn't. I was comforting her for some reason, saying, don't worry, it'll be okay weird. Well, glad I got that off my chest. TL. Doctor. My friend's dad beat a puppy to death with a hammer because it had a stemper. That's not a sign of distemper, it would be the opposite. They would be lethargic, vomiting, and just other stuff. That puppy was okay. What he did was extremely cruel. Well, I've posted this story on Reddit before, but it is appropriate for this thread. Back when I was in middle school, my friends and I used to play airsoft, and we took it seriously. We had expensive guns, armor, the whole nine. Anyway, we used to play back in the woods behind our neighborhood, in the middle of which there was a field. So, we're playing, and I'm on the edge of the field. Along the edge of said field, there are piles of mulch that had to be at least 9 feet high. We used them for cover. Well, I saw my friends on the opposing team approaching, so I ran as fast as I could, and jumped next to one of the mulch piles. Except, I fell in. As I roll back out, I can feel the barrage of airsoft bullets hitting me. I'm out. I'm out. Jesus. Stop shooting I begged. We never started they replied. This is when I look down to see that I am covered in fire ants. I couldn't even see the color of my shirt. Panicking. I start trying to rip off my clothes. But I remember that I'm wearing armor which someone else has to help me remove. So, I endure the pain as my friends run across the field to me, and eventually remove the armor. As soon as they do, I strip naked as I begin running back through the woods and onto the main street of my neighborhood, down a few blocks, and straight into the living room of the friend whose house I was at, which is when I made deer in the headlights eye contact with his two parents who are on the couch. Pausing only for a moment, I run out their back door, and jump into the pool. Ah, relief. I wanna know what the parents we thinking during all this. They just see their son's friend running naked and then jump in the pool. Sleep over. Woke up to weird noises. Look to my left to see my butt banging his girlfriend. Right there. In the same room. Sleep over. And you didn't join the threesome as they wanted. Dude. My friend's 10th birthday. We had 6 friends over and we stayed up watching the first South Park movie. The birthday boy, Nolan, got a motor scooter as his big present. The next morning we woke up to small turds in obscure places on the floor, which we assumed was the fault of Nolan's dog. Nope. We would soon learn this was far worse. Fast forward. We are all taking turns on the scooter. Before it was my turn, my friend Curtis hopped on. As he pulled up and handed me the scooter, I noticed something peculiar. Brown stuff on the seat. We then asked Curtis what the frick it was and immediately regretted it. Curtis crap his pants. Didn't change his clothes. Rode the scooter with his crap stained pants. I'm 20 years old and I will never forget that story. Most awkward birthday party of my life. 
This is something I've never really told anyone. But here goes. I had a friend I guess when I was around 10. Let's call him Jack. He invited me over to a sleepover at his house. We were going to watch Ghostbusters 2 which had just come out on VHS at Blockbuster. Anyways, I get there and I am surprised to see this other kid from my school there. He was about our age. Let's call him Jim. I remember going downstairs sometime after the movie started to get something to drink. When I came back upstairs and opened the door I was shocked. Jack and Jim were on the bed. Jack was on his back and Jim was on top of him. I could see the baby erect penises basically banging into each other. I was like WTF. My 10 year old brain couldn't comprehend what was going on. Jack acted like it was no big deal and called it sword fighting and wanted to know if I wanted to join in. I just said nothing and proceeded to rewatch the movie. I never really talked to Jack again. TL doctor saw two baby penises sword fighting and lost a friend. Was sleeping on the floor. While there, I had a pretty good view under the bed, and I came face to face with some seriously skidded up underpants. I wasn't impressed. I would regularly go to my buddy's house and his dad kept a sign on his bedroom door that read, if you hear us a rockin', don't come a knockin'. My aunt had a sign on her door that read the orgy room. I got up to pee in the middle of the night. My friend's dog knocked me over, held me down, and started humping me. I was maybe 8, very small and thin, I couldn't fight the dog off, thank god I was wearing pants and not a gown, I basically had to lay there until he was done, I still don't like big dogs to this day. That's... Reddit, what was the most awkward experience you've had in school? First year of secondary school, getting changed after a pay lesson and the fire alarm goes off. Teacher comes charging into the changing room telling everyone to get the heck out in whatever state we are in. This would have been fine if I wasn't currently wearing my boxers and my school shirt and jumper. So 11 year old me is standing in the playground with a third of the school laughing at me in just boxers and a jumper. I thought people had forgotten about it until I looked in the yearbook and about 6 people put that moment as their best school moment. 7th grade. While I was waiting for the bus with my friends, I tried to let out a fart. Unfortunately, it was actually a shart, and I let out a pretty decent amount of liquid crap. All my friends knew almost right away, and started cracking up. I figured that I could run home and change before the bus came. Just as I started hobbling towards my house, the bus arrived. I was an idiot, and decided to get on the bus, figuring that I could just get rid of my underwear once I got to school. The bus ride was heck. After the longest 10 minutes of my life, with everyone laughing their asses off at me, the bus stopped in front of the school. During the few minutes in which it was stopped, a couple kids were freaking around, and threw one dude's poster out the window. Some kids started spitting on the poster, and the bus driver flipped out. He stormed off into the school and brought the principal onto the bus. The principal ended up yelling at us for an hour about how we're all a bunch of crazy misfits and how we're all going to get a week of detentions. As he's raging at us, I'm just sitting there grimacing in the discomfort of wearing shirt stained pants. Towards the end, he noticed the smell, and remarked, what smells so bad everyone started cracking up at this point, which made the principal even angrier. He gave everyone another week of detentions, which got some people pee at me. After over an hour of sitting on a bus with my pants soaked in crap, I finally managed to make it to the locker room, with many awkward glances along the way. Thankfully, the showers were all unused. I threw my underwear and pants away, and changed into my dirty gym shorts. The feeling of wearing filthy gym clothes after 2 hours of sitting in crap is a pleasure that nothing can ever really compare to. TL. DR. Don't freaking gamble with a fart. Ever. So this was junior year of high school and it was prom time. I didn't have anyone to ask so I asked the school S. Perfect. So everything went fine and then we find ourselves at the after party. I am. Drunk. We are talking outside and all of a sudden she just grabs my shirt collar and we're going at it. We suddenly find ourselves in the pool house disrobing. I'm in for roughly 2 minutes when suddenly everything goes limp on me. Mother sucker. He ain't coming back. Now while she swore she wasn't going to tell anyone, and that it was totally fine. I knew that was a complete lie. This girl can be a huge C. 
So yeah we go back inside. I pass out and I can already hear her telling all of her friends what just happened. So skip to end of the year party. There's probably 200 kids there. And this party was at a large house where everyone partied in one giant room. I was outside smoking a cigarette when someone came outside to tell me to take my time coming back inside. I was like okay, I will do that weird. So I kind of forgot about that warning and walked back inside and all of a sudden everyone stopped, looked at me, and started yelling limp dong, limp dong, limp dong. I froze. I had no idea what to do, so I just owned it and started jumping up and down while yelling at myself. It wasn't that bad. It was all in good fun, but those first few seconds were haunting. I was one of the first to get boobs. In second grade, little perv felt up my grapes in the lunch line. It's okay he probably has his own boobs now. It was my sophomore year picture day and I always, without fail, would mix up the auditorium and gymnasium. Because of how many students attended our school we were called down to the auditorium to get our pictures taken in alphabetic order of our last names. Since no one in my class had a last name near mine, I walked down to get my picture alone and of course, headed to the gymnasium. I don't know why I didn't get the hint that it wasn't in the gym by the total of zero people waiting outside but as I walked in, a whole bleacher full of boys swiveled their head to look at me and shouted, What are you doing here? You don't have a dong. I got so flustered and awkward that I turned to leave and ran face first into the door, giving myself a nosebleed and prompting me to do a shame walk to the nearest bathroom. TL. DR. Walked into an all boys gym class, got flustered because I was lost and ran into the door giving myself a nosebleed. 8th grade. Drama class. I'm a guy. Back in school I was a challenging student who would do anything for a laugh. I guess I must have been funny, because I got the lead female role for a play. It came from old Shakespeare days when males played all roles. We took the show on the road to old folks homes, other schools, and wound up at physically mentally handicapped school performing for them. We had the understudies take the lead roles. I was left with nothing to do. Backstage there was a larger girl who was trying to wrestle me. Being a 13 year old male, wrestling was my thing. I thought we were finished. She thought otherwise. I went to take a peek at the audience. She ripped my pants down. I turned around and kicked her super hard in the stomach and yelled you be at the top of my lungs. I didn't mind an entire school of handicapped children seeing me naked. But when my teacher stormed backstage and asked what was going on I felt bad trying to explain nudity. And the girl laying on the ground making dog barfing noises trying to recover from a kick to the stomach. I didn't get along with most school staff. And here I was letting down one of the few who understood me. In my high school we had different tracks of math and in the advanced group there was only enough students for one class each year. So I basically did 5 years of math with the same 22-ish kids from 8th grade. We started Algebra 1 in middle school. To 12th. So in my junior year the girls who were all friends and clique why were talking about boys that they thought were cute. Apparently no one remembered or cared about the fact that I was in the classroom because someone mentioned me. One girl said she thought I was really hot and then all the other girls laughed at her. I spent the rest of junior and all of senior year thinking I was just about ugly as frick. It turns out they were just laughing for some other reason because I was told by one of them about a month before I got out of high school that they all thought I was cute. No one freaking told me that. I'm still confused about what happened in my high school years. Was feeling a bit nauseous at school. I should have avoided eating anything, but grilled cheese and tomato soup was too enticing to pass up. Five minutes later, I stand up and projectile vomit enough tomato soup to turn our cafeteria into a murder scene. At my graduation ball, security caught me rolling a joint on the toilet and marched me to the table that had my entire proud family seated around it to confess to them what I had just done. I had this foreboding that the whole school would know and dreaded the upcoming Monday, but there was nothing that would have prepared me for the amount of whispering and pointing that set in as soon as I stepped through the school doors. I tried finding my friends to assess the level of damage that had been done, but before I could manage to do so. I was whisked off to the principal's office who kept asking me to admit it in a dramatic voice but refused to tell me what it even was. At least, 
This got me out of class for 2 hours, after which he had to let me go as I kept refusing to admit to anything. Schools are not allowed to do drug screenings on their students in my country. In case you're wondering, when I came out of his office, there was a whole bunch of people loitering around there, all trying very hard to avoid my gaze as I walked past. In the beginner yard, the music teacher I had last been taught by 4 years ago grasped my hands, asked me to please get help and quit this life, then handed me some brochure. The whole thing just kept getting more and more awkward. I was feeling horrible by now, and still had no clue what was going on. When I finally managed to find my friends, they weren't in the same grade so it took some searching. They told me that apparently I was a drug dealer and had been caught trying to sell a kilo of weed at the ball, as well as trying to put LSD in the water supply of the venue stupid to the max, but people seemed to believe it. The whole thing thankfully got eclipsed by the stress of preparing for and actually passing the graduation and end of year tests, but for a while, I got asked for drugs so often it really wasn't funny anymore. Some deadbeat pothead suddenly thought I was one of them and wanted me to go smoke with them all the time and hook them up. Something I definitely didn't want as I had seen a few of my friends become pot zombies by that point. Many people didn't even want to be seen talking to me 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 It's a funny episode in retrospect, but when it happened, it was kinda scary to see how easily people believe any kind of crap and just go with it without even thinking twice, and how opinions are shaped. When I was a freshman in high school I was heading to my locker on a very, very large high school campus and I gambled with a fart. I lost. I lost in the most extreme way possible, as a liquid torrent of chunky fesses rolled into my pants and down my left leg. I stood, stunned, in a hallway filled with students as I realized my life was over. I walked, knees locked rigid so as to minimize locomotion in my pants to the bank of payphones and waited with horror as I waited for one to become available. Finally, after an agonizing minute I scooted up, slid in a quarter, called my mom and said simply I need a clean pair of pants, underwear, socks, and a jumbo plastic bag as soon as you can possibly make it happen and hung up as soon as she assented. I then continued my penguin shuttle towards the nurse's office, but as I passed a girl I had a massive crush on, she called out to me, waved, and asked how I was. My face went crimson. I said I had to run, and moved along to the nurse's office. I got to the office, burst past the nurse saying simply I need your bathroom for a bit. My mom will be here soon. Shut the door, and I stared somewhat shell-shocked at the door. After 20 minutes, there was a knock at the door. I opened the door slightly. My mom slid in a plastic bag filled with clothes, a jumbo freezer ziplock bag, and a container of moist wipes. I thanked her profusely, and got to work. I put my soiled pants and underwear, and socks, in the bag, put on the new underwear, shorts, and socks she'd brought me, and was triumphant that the great pants crapping incident of 2007 had gone unnoticed. I handed the bag back to my mom and confidently strode out of the nurse's office. My grin faulted as I stepped outside, and saw the girl from before sitting outside. She looked up and said are you okay? I was really worried when you ran away like that. Hey, weren't you wearing pants before? In middle school, going through puberty and all, I had my period during class. Of course I just sat there until break. When break finally came around, I went to the washroom to clean myself off and then come with some supplies to clean my seat because I wouldn't be in that classroom for the next period, and I didn't want someone else to clean my mess. Little did I know, a bunch of guys were around that seat, not from my class, all grossed out and all. Here I just come walking in, cleaned the seat as quickly as I could and then left. You 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 The silence of them watching me clean the seat and the uproar of laughter that happened when I left. I just wanted the seat to be nice and clean to whoever was sitting there next. In junior year, my friend and I would have dance-offs during lunch. We were both as white as white could be, so it just amounted to a comical display of discombobulated flailing in front of a packed cafeteria. Eventually, the lunch ladies would turn on music for us. Once, we even got free lunch. Good times. Anyway, one day we had a dance off. Everyone was cheering or throwing things at us. Music was playing. About a minute in, I noticed someone standing immediately behind me. Oh, good. 
an outside participant I thought. I decided to twerk myself over to them. I made contact, and the person backed off. I chased them down with my gyrating butt. That's when I noticed the entire cafeteria had gone silent. No music was playing. No one was clapping. I was the only sign of life in a field of kids frozen in time. Mouths agape. All eyes stuck on me. I turned around and there I saw him. Directly behind me, the person whom I had been grinding, was my vice principal. He stood, arms planted on hips, brows furrowed in an odd mix of vexation and curiosity, staring at me. Son, what are you doing he asked. Up, uh, D dancing. Well, we gonna have to have a little talk in my office, then, he said, eyes flaring to punctuate talk. I'm sorry, I won't let it happen again I was as sheepish as I could be. How does one explain that they got a detention for giving the vice principal a lap dance? I'll be calling you later. Sit down and finish your lunch. He turned on his heel and left. The roars of laughter would have been appreciated had I not been having a panic attack at the moment. My father was absolutely against all forms of class clonery. I spent the entire day dreading the promised summons. But he never called. I got away with it. And from then on, I was the kid who gave the vice principal a lap dance. TL. DR. I accidentally gave the vice principal a lap dance. Before I begin I just want to state that I have shared this on Reddit before and it was the most awkward situation I was ever a part of during high school. I was heading to my locker during my spare block after lunch to grab a pop tart out of my locker when I see this girl from another high school in the hallway. She used to go to our school but she got expelled for showing up to class drunk. Anyways I see her in the hallway and I walk up to her to say hey. Before I can even utter a word she runs right at me and jumps on me giving me a massive bear hug. As she's hugging me I can smell the whiskey on her breath. She lets go of me and I ask her what she's doing here and she said she was here to see a substitute teacher. Let's call him Mr. Williams. She had heard he was going to be teaching here today and she needed to speak with him. I'm bored during my spare so I decide I'll help her find Mr. Williams. I didn't ask why she needed to see him. I wish I had though or else I wouldn't have helped her find him. Anyway, we go classroom to classroom looking for him and we must have searched 7 or 8 before we found him. When she walked into that classroom he looked like he had seen a ghost. I have never seen a man look as scared as he did in my entire life. She gets right into the middle of the classroom and in her inebriated state she blurts out that she's pregnant and that Mr. Williams is the father. She goes off on this huge rant yelling at the guy out about how he hasn't returned her phone calls or texts since the last time they had sex at his place. She asks him why he hasn't returned his phone calls. He is just standing there in a state of shock unable to put a coherent sentence together. Then she begins to cry and asks him if it's because she isn't attractive enough for him and before he can even reply she lifts up her shirt and takes it off and throws it at him. Then she takes off her bra and throws it at him and yells how can you not want this body? I'm the sexiest woman you'll ever frick. Once she yelled that I just got the heck out of there. I didn't want to be around when the principal or any other teachers showed up. I didn't want to be around when the principal or any other teachers showed up. Man you are stupid. You had front seat at the show and you ran away. Me and some others found it funny but I took ROTC in high school and after 2 years I basically just sat in a small office during class until PT on Friday. The officer cadets always use the office to change since it was easier and faster. After PT one day I went in early since I had to do something else. Started changing. A girl who technically wasn't allowed to change in there but we let her anyway since we were friends accidentally walked in on me half naked. She made it halfway in before we both simultaneously noticed each other and she bolted out apologizing. I made a joke about it and she just seemed embarrassed and apologized all day. Kindergarten. Got angry that someone took my toy so I went on a rampage and hit the crap out of a ton of kids with a chair. I got expelled. Last Friday, leaving lunch, I saw a table set up with candy. I wanted the candy, so I spoke to the people managing it for a minute. I think it was about head trauma awareness. They gave me a ticket to a film I presume was about head trauma, but could tell I wasn't interested and asked me to give it to someone else. On my way back to class, 
I saw another ticket on the floor, so I picked it up to throw it in a trash can by the water fountain. One of my teachers was also at the water fountain filling a water bottle. I figured I would make the booth people proud, so I offered them to her. Do you want to see this? I got some tickets. Ooh I really wanted to go to that, but I have to go home. I stared at the tickets for a second trying to figure out why anyone would have planned to see this, but had to get back to class in a few seconds. So I just said, okay, and lightly jogged away. She called out that so sweet, as I left, and that's about when I realized what I'd just done. But the bell rang, and I missed my chance to explain myself. I have to see this person tomorrow. TL. DR. Accidentally asked my teacher out with a pair of tickets on a Friday night and then ran away. When I was in grade 10 a kid I kinda knew at the time offered to sell me coke at school. I'm not a big drug user and I don't know what I was thinking maybe like cola or something for some reason. I follow him to the bathroom and he pulls out a big bag of powder. Here comes the awkward part a lanky guy comes out of stall sees me and this kid with powder. Unbreaking eye contact. No words at all he just nopes the frick out of there. Didn't even wash his hands absolutely disgusting. The first day of my sophomore year I was walking to all of my classes, getting to know my schedule and the locales in which I'd be suffering for the next 180 days. As we all know, the first day of any school year is the hardest. Everyone's so used to not being around each other that we just kinda sit in silence and wait for some sort of awesome bonding experience to lose out of nothingness. That's probably just me. Anyway, the day was awkward in general but the worst part was when I had to go to my algebra class. I was late. On the first. Fricking. Day. So I walk in and everyone goes silent. Everyone was looking at me. So out of like. Impulse I yell at my teacher sorry first day schedules even though she's like right in front of me. She shudders at the volume of my voice. And doesn't respond. And I'm kinda shifting weight on both feet trying to hold in the bricks that were forcing themselves out of my anus. Anyway, like I said, she looks at me like I'm a freaking idiot and she doesn't respond so I just play it off real cool and start looking around. This goes on for about 30 seconds. The class and the teacher watching me stand and do nothing. And I finally realize that I'm in a freaking classroom. So with that that or inspiring eureka moment, I decide to find a desk. I couldn't see anything over the rows of puberty and angst. So I yell at the teacher so where do I sit teach and I get no response. Until some social warrior took the burden of my existence. Strapped it to their chest. And detonated in a crowded corner of the room. Their last actions becoming them pointing to an empty desk and saying that desk is empty. The first step I take the bricks shot out of my rectum at max 7. Luckily, no one notices and I waddle to my seat. Marinating in my social shame. Worst 90 minutes of my life. TL. DR. Shat bricks because was late a first day of algebra. Couldn't find a seat until some radical terrorist detonated an explosive. Also yelled at my teacher even though she was right in front of me and referred to her as teach. Being voted the ugliest kid in school by the popular girls in my class. Embarrassing for me. The awkward part was the vicious no holds barred tirade I unleashed on them which reduced one girl to tears and a whole bunch of other students not sure what to do. The whole remainder of the class was fricked up. I guess they just expected me to sight there and take it frick them. Probably crapping myself in gym class. On the one hand, not many people have taken running shoots before. So I guess that makes me special. I walked into class. And my benchmate handed me a card. Completely handmade. Opened it to find this. You are Pikachu. I choose you. I'm your TGP. Pre 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 I I. He crap his pants later in the day. And told me so looking straight in the eyes. Never forgetting that day. This happened my sophomore year. I was going to the bathroom after school had ended. Get it all out of my system before drumline practice. My school is cheap so our men's restrooms lack the all important dividers between urinals. As I walked in, I saw that the bathroom was full and there was only one urinal available, right next to another guy from drumline. As I unzipped, I chuckled. I don't know why. I never will. Then he chuckled. We made eye contact, while peeing. Yes, and burst out laughing for about 30 seconds. Then we zipped up, washed our hands, and never spoke of it again. 
My senior year of high school I was assigned a group project of books we had individually read previously in the year. Naturally, my four best friends and I got together to work. We incorporated all the main characters of the books into a satire film with a plot that ended up ridiculous and complete ball wash. Probably because we shot and edited the thing at 12 the previous night. Anyway, I don't remember all the characters, but I do remember two of them were from Cormac McCarthy books and one was precious from that sapphire book or whatever. Seeing as how it was a satire, we decided to use blackface for Precious's character. Not just blackface, I mean blackface. The full out tar baby red lips white around the eyes blackface. Also, a large nasty nappy wig. In a scene of our skit, she had just gotten out of the shower and was wearing a towel. Man it was great, we got a pillow and a belt and situated it perfectly proportional under the towel to imitate her belly fat and boobs. So the character, who was player by yours truly, sits down and starts eating watermelon. Just in case we hadn't been racist enough yet, the following scene was her being fricked by the main creepy McCarthy character from No Country for Old Men to the tune of Cotton Eyed Joe. We watched our video during class. As soon as precious I walk out of the shower our massively obese, black vice principal looks through the small window and the door. He watches through the watermelon and sex scene. He slowly opens the door, pokes his head in for 10 seconds, and then slowly closes the door again, staying silent the whole time. My friends and I melted in our seats, we though we were done for. He never spoke of it to us. But man were we terrified. All of our classmates were almost as embarrassed and didn't even so much as chuckle through the whole video. And our teacher, a new age, feminist earthy lady almost broke down and cried in class for allowing us to show it. It was a terrible idea. And we were C for being that racist. And we deserved all the awkwardness and more for our shiftiness. TL. DR. My black principal walked in on a terribly racist video a project group and I made and were showing in class. What is the most awkward thing you've done in a misguided attempt at flirting? Oh man. This one burns to relive. About a year and a half ago, I flew into Montana and drove straight to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, with a good buddy of mine. We started drinking pretty heavily at the rodeo, and decided to eventually saddle up at the million dollar cowboy bar. When we walked in, there was space at the back bar, so we took our positions. Within minutes, we were surrounded by 20 girls from a bachelorette party. Money. Pause for relevant context. I had been up for about 20 hours off of 3 hours of sleep. I don't have cash, and this is an all cash bar. My buddy, now sitting on my left, is very smooth with girls, and I was in the middle of a dry spell. One of the girls comes up and sits down on my right, chatting me up. She's gorgeous, and I'm pumped. After a few minutes, my buddy starts rubbing my leg. I'm a little confused, but figured he was giving me a hint, and start mirroring his behavior by rubbing the girl's leg. After a few more minutes, he starts rubbing more vigorously. I'm thinking to myself, this crap actually works, but nevertheless start rubbing her leg more vigorously. The conversation quickly deteriorates, and she runs off in a hurry to join her friends on the dance floor. I turn to my buddy and he says, take the f 20. What 20? The 20 dollars I'm rubbing on your leg so you can buy her a drink. She came back 5 minutes later wearing a wedding ring. I'm positive she wasn't married, just applying some douche repellent. I once told a girl I liked her brother, by accident. See, what I meant to say was I like your bra, but as I was saying that I thought to myself oh, I probably shouldn't say that as it would give away that I've been looking through the folds on the front of her button up shirt to the bra underneath. So bra and oh got mixed to form bro, and I said I like your bro. She looked at me funny and said I don't have a brother, you must be thinking of my cousin. He's not gay though. I walked away, wondering what the frick just happened. In high school, when I was 14 or 15, I rode the bus with a girl who had blossomed early. She was from a different group from me and we did some occasional flirting but chances for actual interaction were rare. While we were standing around waiting for the buses to arrive one day, I noticed that she was wearing jeans shorts cut very short on top of her very long legs. For some reason, I thought it would be hilarious to light the fringe of her jeans shorts on fire with my lighter. Keep in mind, I was guided only by hormones. 
I thought it would be like a sock fire or something. Like whoosh and then out. So when her back was turned I lit the lighter right under her butt. And of course immediately the frayed cotton of the shorts went right up and showed no indication of going right out. Immediately I recognized that I had made a major error and I commenced slapping at her upper thigh butt area in an attempt to get it out. It did go out, but of course I had run up behind her and apparently begun roughly grabbing at her butt. From her perspective, attempting to smooth it over with I was trying to put out the fire that I had set upon you didn't go over any better. And needless to say I could have gone to jail. She just decided to avoid me, and rightly so. From the non out, TL, DR. I set a girl I liked on fire. You got off lucky. There was a story of a guy on here who saw two co-workers sneak into the bathroom together at a Hawaiian themed office party. He snuck into the bathroom after them and lit the grass skirts on fire as a joke. The guy died. Seriously. Don't play with fire what the frick. Was joking around with a girl and made a lightly rude comment, which the girl rightfully took as a joke. She covered her ears and laughingly said oh, my virgin ears. I thought I was being witty when I answered with is your mouth a virgin. 2. I got slapped. Heck yeah. Me. Drunk as heck. Unlike the other guys. I know when to stop drinking. I know when I had enough. She. Yeah. Me. So. What do you do? She. I work at Tupperware. I sell Tupperware. Me. Oh. Really? So are you wearing it now? She. What? Me. Tupperware. She. I still don't get how I could get so drunk that I'm a stock Tupperware for lingerie. I was at a college party once, and these girls I knew were carrying around these little squirt guns. When the cute one set hers down, I thought I'd flirt a little bit and kind of playfully squirt her with it. It shoots directly into her eye. The squirt gun was full of vodka. For what it's worth, getting vodka in your eye can get you drunk. Coincidentally, I was just sitting in the library reading this thread when a hot girl I had been checking out in the next terminal surprised me by leaning over and asking me what I was giggling about. The fact that I had to somehow explain that I was reading a post about guys failing at flirting, while in the same moment attempting to flirt with her, turned my jeeky mind into a Mobius strip. Panic. Anyway, it was pretty awkward. I blew it. Had a girl come in to check in for an appointment at my job not too long ago. I asked her name and she said Chandra. I told her beautiful name. It's also the name of my favorite space based observatory. I am not even joking. That's unique. I like it. It's a huge step up from my Miriam. Beautiful name. One of my grandma's best friends is named Miriam. Stabbed a girl in the eye with my finger. Then elbowed her friend in the face was trying to brush the girl's hair off of her face when she turned and I poked her in the eye. Then when I went to put my arm around her to see if she was okay and I elbowed her friend in the face as she leaned in to see if she was okay too. After encouragement, a drunk friend of mine wandered over to a hot chick at a loud party and stumbled into the following exchange. Hey, my name's Luis. What's your name? Luis struggling to hear. Haha. <laughs> oh wow. Your name's Luis too. That's so crazy, comma I'm really drunk, wanders off. He could've played that off as a lame joke and kept going. The morning after a sleepover in high school I once sat across an empty room from a girl I liked and stared at her for about 2 hours as she slept, waiting for her to wake up. Thinking back on it, I'm pretty sure she must have woken up at some point and noticed me but was too creeped out terrified to do anything but pretend to be sleeping. I look back on that and wonder what was going through my mind. I was once smitten with a bartender and thought it would be cute to leave him a paper boat made of toilet paper in the bathroom. Upon my return, I said in my sexiest voice, I left you something in the bathroom. I wanted to slap my forehead as soon as that sentence escaped my mouth. I would love to have seen his face when he walks into the cubicle next to yours to find a massive turd some pee up slapper just curled out. Once, a few years ago when I was a waiter, I was at work and saw a female friend whom I hadn't seen in a while walking away from me. I ran up and grabbed her butt. The girl who turned around was not my friend. The risk factor for such a stunt is very high. I said I really appreciate tea instead of I really appreciate it. Thankfully it was only awkward for a second. 
I got all wide eyed having realized what I said, but then she started laughing. My buddy once sat nervously at a bar waiting to talk to a very attractive girl. He finally got up the courage to go talk to her but when he got close to her, he instead punched her in the back and ran away. It remained the saddest male-female interaction I've ever seen. That would have been a legitimate flirtatious act in the fourth grade. Dude is just a little behind on the times is all. I was pretty innocent at 16 and was flirting with a guy on my swim team. For some reason he was wagging his finger in my face, so I snatched it and moved it towards my face, I dunno. I think I was pretending to bite it, just being feisty. He had this intense look on his face, and as I moved the finger to my mouth I suddenly realized, horrified, what it actually looked like. I dropped his hand and ran out of the room we didn't talk for months. I was so embarrassed I didn't even want to see him. Comma he had this intense look on his face. Yes, a boner while wearing swim trunks is something I would try to avoid, too. I looked up opening lines on the internet because the last 20 times I started with hi my name is I was blown off. I approached a stunning blonde with the line. She immediately engaged, but a few seconds later was like wait a minute, are you one of those pickup artist guys that go on the internet to learn how to talk to girls after that it was awkward city. Another time I saw this cute girl by herself in a bar. I walked up to her and asked her if she was all by herself. She ran away. In retrospect that must have been scary for her considering I was twice her height. And that line was probably not the best choice. Not me, but someone I know told a girl he really liked that he was going to rape her in a sexy voice. With the intention of seducing her. I don't know how he defines flirting, but I'm pretty sure that doesn't qualify. Not myself. But I once had a friend who snuck away from everyone after a night out and wandered down the street masturbating under the concept that a girl would see it and think I want a piece of that. Universe. Look upon me, an unashamed sexual being. Drunk in Madrid, I tried to show off my awesomeness by jumping over a rail. I came up short, smashed my tailbone on it, and proceeded to cry like a bee because the pain was unbearable. Did kind of the same thing. Drunk and we were jumping a fence to go into some hot springs. Started to jump the fence and landed right on my nuts. I too cried like a bee. The fence was 6 feet tall. I'm once removed, both are my cousins. My cousin was a really liked, popular rugby team captain type in grade 11. A new day of school, hotty new girl starts school in his class. He sits next to her, starts chatting it up, sitting closer flirting. She reciprocated, batting eyelids, etc, flirty smiles, starts talking about the weekend, making plans, she lets him know she has to visit her grandma for some family function, funny that, so does he, wait, what is your dad's name, omg, slunks back, shy smile, so how is uncle doing, anyhow, second cousin's ftl, edited, captain and clarification, so does he, is the family function, I think it was a yearly gathering, not the grandmother. Exactly why I don't talk about family with girls. I was playing frisbee with a group of people. I threw it at this really cute girl, who, I swear, was looking at me when I threw it. She turned around as it was still in flight. Someone called her name and she turned just in time to have this frisbee hit right between the eyes. It nearly knocked her out. Definitely knocked to the ground. I spent the next 2 hours apologizing. She got a beautiful set of raccoon eyes from that hit. Bam. Haha. Ha. I've had a few frisbee mishaps. Once I backhanded a girl full force during an ultimate frisbee game. She jumped in front of me as I went to huck the disc about 40-50 yards. I caught her square in the side of the face with the back of my hand. After the point, people who didn't see the incident asked what happened. I responded with, she was in my way, so I backhanded her. Related. My first day at a new high school, I was outside on the quad asking a girl for directions. The next thing I know, I feel a powerful slap on the butt and hear hey brad. I turned around to see a very attractive girl recoil in horror, exclaiming, you're not brad. Looking her in the eye, I calmly replied, no, but you can call me brad if it makes you happy. That's pretty smooth on your part. I got to hang out with this really hot chick, and I ended up talking to her brother about video games. 
I was not prepared. My friend got a cute girl as his roommate, and I was thinking about talking her up, even after hearing that she had a boyfriend. When the guy came over to hang out with her, he and I talked about video games. It was on that day I decided not to be a dong. I stroked a girl's arm once, for like 15 minutes, while we were sitting in her car. Even now I look back on that and I'm like WTF that's so creepy, your story is better by far. That's straight up super villain creepy. Long story short, I jokingly told some girl I was flirting with that she looked like a chipmunk, and it did not go over well at all, but who knew. So in high school I played tennis, a cute girl came up to me and asked hey, are you single and, not thinking, I replied no, I play doubles. While on a ride in Disney World back in middle school, I turned to the girl sitting beside me, a classmate, that I had been joking with most of the ride and put my hands up making woo ghost noises. It was the dark part of that it's a small world after all right. Anyway, I poked her in the eye and knocked out her contact. She had to go back to the hotel to get her glasses. One time, I gave a girl some zip ties. Another time, I fixed a girl's vacuum cleaner. Another time, I touched the legs of every girl at a party. Another time, I was talking to a girl who snorted when laughing and made a reference to this fact in an attempt to tease her, but it was completely out of context and thus awkward. Another time, in 8th grade, I remembered a girl's phone number and address from the school directory, and then shared this fact with her. Another time, I had a prolonged email exchange with a girl about some National Instruments DA boards that neither of us were particularly interested in. I did not get any those times, or any other time. At this rate you will soon have an extensive list of what not to do ever again. Glass half full. I experienced the following event with some friends. We were in a bar. It was late and we were pretty drunk. I knew one of my friends had a thing for one of my female friends, then someone touched my leg and caressed it for a moment until I said, I know both of you are a little frisky and pretty drunk. I'm not gonna complain but you should know. One of you is touching my leg, saying that and thinking it was the female friend, the male friend shouted oh, frick sorry, I still mocking him with it, p.s. I'm male. 2. Number 1. Chatting up a girl and found out she worked opposite my house at an old people's home. Had some juicy gossip from a friend who worked there also so asked do you know the silly bugger who tried to kill herself last week? The reply? It was me actually. Sometimes there is nothing you can do or say to make things better. I apologized and walked away. Also, showing off to a group of girls, vaulted over a fence, slipped, and smashed my kneecap. I am still patella let in my left leg. After a movie, my date and I went next door to the bookstore. For some reason, we ended up holding hands through the self-help section. I noticed a self-help book on sexual positions or something like that and I jokingly told her that we should pick it up. She seemed cool and blew it off, but she was distant the rest of the night. I found out later from my friend, who was her co-worker and the one that hooked us up, that she didn't want to move that fast and lost interest in me. Then I found out that she had fricked around with two of her co-workers prior to going on a date with me. She fricked one of them and blew another guy as a going away present before he transferred to a different state. Made me feel pretty crappy. Most awkward thing I've seen a friend do was he was really into this girl. Got drunk. Went to talk to her at a party at her house. Well. He saw her through door and just started talking and walking to her, right through the plate glass door. The prettiest girl I ever knew was into me. She moved away for college and me and my friends planned a trip to the city she was staying in and I told her we could meet up at some point. It was the afternoon, and we weren't going to meet up until that night. So my friends and I went to her park and started to drink a few beers. A few beers turned into a bottle of whiskey and then some guy sold us a bunch of ecstasy. By the time we got to her house I was real messed up. I knew I was acting weird too, and I tried to stop, but I think that made me act more weird. I ended up passing out on her couch and I woke up at 3 in the morning covered in my pee. I snuck out and took a taxi back to the place I was staying at. We used to talk a lot, but we don't anymore. Hanging with a friend a few girls in a park. The topic turns to how many Mia and my friend are. 
I said that I can not take any kind of pain and not even flinch. The one girl calls me on it and starts things, flicking my ear, pinching me, etc. After about 10 things she says I bet I can burn you with my cigarette and it will hurt you. I say go for it so she does. She put her cigarette out on my arm. Hurt like a bee but she was cute so I never flinched. She was impressed so we talked a bit more by ourselves at a picnic table. We are getting ready to go and I stand up. Turn around to fast and smack my knee on the table and collapse. She looked at me and said well you had me up until that. I still have the scar on my arm after 15 years. Dude, if you hit your knee in just the right place it hurts like a bee. It's like you connect with a nerve or something. There was a super cute girl in some humanities class I had a year or two ago. I go to an engineering school so not only do I not normally take humanities classes, there are also not normally super cute girls. And the most that would happen between was that we would smile politely at each other upon one or the other entering the room. One day I was going towards class with a slice of pizza in my hand, eating as I went. I passed her going the other way and she waved and said hi I waved back and answered pfffgh this was because of the mouthful of pizza I was sporting. Chipmunk getting ready to hibernate style. Some crust fell out too. Just to make completely certain I would never speak to her again. Drunk in a bar. I saw this beautiful girl checking me out so instead of going there and introducing myself. I put a small cucumber in my mouth and while half of it was hanging out of it, I yank it up and down like a penis as I was approaching her. My cunning plan was that she would try to catch it with her mouth and we'd end up kissing. Guess what happened? At a party in college, drunk guy walks up to girl sitting down and starts dancing on her. Girl, get off me. Guy takes his shirt off. Girl, what are you doing? Guy, I thought you said, get awesome. That was awesome. I've had some awkward ones but I have one that happened to me recently. It's more the other person than me. I was riding my bike to the store to get some ice. They have 5-10 pounds of ice bags and I like to chew ice when I work. I am carrying the ice in one hand while riding my bike. A girl, looking about college age, very nice looking, waves at me, thinking I knew this girl, probably in high school. I waved back. Then I noticed it wasn't anyone I knew stupid me. By then, though, I had stopped on the bike. You usually carry that much ice here. It helps with the work I do. I have school and work so it helps me concentrate. Me, you live around here. Her. Ya yeah, points in general direction. Right there on cross streets me. You have roommates here. Well I guess my wife is my roommate me. I swear I didn't know that a girl that dark could blush that red. It then dawned on me what was happening. I've never been hit on by a girl before so it was, weird to say the least. Ohh, I'm nice meeting you, me, waits for a few seconds, um yeah, sorry her, I rode off, I didn't know how to handle the situation, now that I look back on it I probably should have said something to soften the blow or something but it was so weird, I didn't have time to think, it did make my day though, I told my wife later that day and she just laughed, tl. D a girl tried to hit on a married man. Weirdness ensues. Wife laughed. Sixth grade dance and I didn't know this girl beyond knowing I wanted to get to know her. I'd seen her around school but no classes together. I go up to her and say why aren't you dancing with anyone she smiled at me no one has asked me to dance yet I replied well. I happen to know someone who wants to dance with you she smiles bigger oh really? Who I freeze. Up, uh, a friend of mine. Let me go get him. Yeah. I went to this guy I knew and told him dude. I froze. Here's five bucks just dance with her. I can't face her. So he takes the five bucks. Walks into the gym and I point her out. He knows her. It was his sister. I was once in the gym at my high school. As in the weightlifting part. Frick I'm awkward already. One of the hottest girls in school. Older than me by a few years. Isn't there. I take off my shoes. Policy. Silly policy, it will hurt more if you drop the weights, and move another pair of shoes a little bit to do so. Hot girl says, hey, don't touch my shoes, with a big smile. I am slightly taken aback, then recognize the flirting and say, I will take a crap in your shoes end of story. Notice I said I was once in the gym. I met a girl on a holiday and was totally trying it on with her, when I got stung by a jellyfish, 
It was quite embarrassing just how much pain I was in and showing it. However when she crouched and pee all over my back the embarrassment kinda lifted. Later that evening scored. Dear penthouse. That day I learned I love water sports. I once had a chick compliment my eyelashes in class. Something along the line of wow. You have really pretty eyes and long eyelashes. I proceeded to reach up and touch my eyelashes while mumbling something like oh. These things. And in a nervous twitch. My fingers pinched together and I inadvertently pulled a huge chunk of eyelashes right out of my eyelid. She stared in horror as I did the only thing I could think of. I blew a puff of air at them and let them go. Causing them to sprinkle to the ground like dandelion fluff. She never spoke to me again. And I don't blame her. Three summers ago I was sitting in an airport terminal. Ready to fly to Arizona to visit some relatives. As I sat reading someone else's newspaper and drinking overpriced coffee, I looked up and saw a beautiful girl, about my age, sit down across from me. Something about her made me want to talk to her. I smiled at her. She was reading. She didn't see me. I decided to try a distraction. I coughed, and she glanced up. Sorry, hi, excuse me. I mumbled. Hi, what's that you're reading she smiled, and went back to her book. Oh well. I guess she's not interested I thought to myself. Eventually, the call to board was made, and I quickly grabbed my bag and got on the plane. I settled into my seat, disappointed in having missed my chance at having a nice conversation to pass the time, settling instead for the daily Sudoku puzzle. Much to my surprise, the girl from before approached my row and sat down next to me. Fate, it seems, has given me a second chance. Hello again, I tried. Once again, she smiled at me and returned to her book. At least this time she seemed a little bit interested in paying attention to me. Desperately, I tried to string together some kind of conversation starter as the plane took off. So what brings you to Arizona again with the smile, but still nothing. I was beginning to wonder if she was mute. All throughout the plane ride, I'd attempt to start a conversation. She'd smile and go back to her book, and I'd sit in awkward silence for a few more minutes. After an hour or so, the plane landed. As she was walking down loading bridge, I caught up with her and went for the gold. Okay, listen, I'm normally not this upfront, but every time I try to talk to you, you smile at me. Would you like to grab some dinner before you go wherever it is you're going? She smiles one last time and says to me, Lo siento, pero no hablo ingles. Adios. I wish I had paid attention in Spanish class. So this really cute girl sat right next to me in class for a whole semester. There was a constant looking at each other with a really big smile in a willing but shy way by the both of us. All semester I sat there like a pee afraid to talk. I never even missed a day in class just to see her. A personal record. I remember her asking her for a pen once but she only had one. So she gave it to me and asked her friend for another one. Bottom line. I liked her and she liked me. So what did I do? I waited till the semester was over then found her on Facebook and messaged her. She replied once then deleted her profile. Yay. That was our awkward. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.